you delicious beings. Let's try again. Tonight's topic of the hour is supernatural phenomena. Have you ever had any bizarre, unexplainable or potentially explainable spiritual or ghostly or what shall I call it? Superstition, superstitious experiences. Have you ever known anyone or even yourself that's had out of body experiences or anything remotely just bizarre and unexplainable? If that is you, M's big up my nephew on the live. If that is you, depending on your culture, your religious backgrounds, perhaps you interpret supernatural experiences very individually. Do you believe in it? Do you not? Today we have guest speaker who goes by the name of Ajadi, otherwise known as Andre. Let's bring you all the way in and let's get started on this topic. What's up, nephew? Yeah. <laughs> I love my nephew. Hey, nephew, nice for you to join me. <laughs> all right. Ajadi, come through, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> okay. And if there's anyone that is um, on the live right now, or maybe even tag a friend who's had bizarre experiences that you cannot explain, bring yourself in, request, uh, press the request button, Andre, if you can. Okay. Andre, have you updated your Instagram? <laughs> that would be one of the reasons why people find it difficult to come on. Yeah. Good, 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 nephew. Keep it locked, yeah? All right. Anyone you know has had any bizarre experiences, things that you never want to tell anybody, now the time to jump on this live today. People are welcome to jump on the live. Let me know if you want to join us on this live today, talking about supernatural experiences. Hey, guest speaker, welcome back to part two. Yes, yes. Gratitude to the altitude. <laughs> I love it when you say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah welcome continue. back, welcome back. So listen, before we get into it, I'm just going to remind the guest speakers one more time, guest viewers, sorry, one more time, that if you or anyone else you know has had any supernatural, bizarre, unexplained, even explained, superstitious, whatever you want to call it, depending on your cultural or religious backgrounds, experiences, perhaps you've even had an out-of-body out experience, perhaps you've even, you thought you saw a ghost, feel free, send messages in the comments box, we'll bring you in on the live and you can tell your story, yeah? So tonight, welcome back, what's going on friend? All the way from across yeah. the ocean, what's happening? Well, we're here vibing as usual, turning up the energy, you know, just being self, being unique, being soul. Being well, as yeah. you've been here before, some months back, which was a whole nother depth conversation, um, I'm not going to go through the whole introduction, but we are going to recap. So just for those who haven't seen you already, remind us on where you are located in the world. All right. Now I'm currently in New York. This mm -hmm. is where I'm jumping right now, originally from Jamaica, mm -hmm. really hard, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Manchester, Mandeville. Yeah, just vibing here in New York for now. Nice, nice, nice. And I'm still going to take you through to the warm-up zone because it still allows new uh, viewers and people that watch the playback to see and experience elements of where you're coming from and what your ideals are. So tell us uh, some warm-up questions. What should I do with you today? Mm. Let me jump straight into where is your favorite place in the world to be? I don't care if that's in your bed or in your toilets. Where is it? Okay. All right, for me, I'm a um, I'm a nature person. Mm. And I like the river mostly. For some reason, I'm connected to the river. Mm. I just like being in nature, just feeling the energy, absorbing the sun, absorbing nature. That's me. In my house, though, in my house, this is my 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 cave for now. Yeah, this is my little office right, right here. So I like being right here. When you say cave, did you mean man cave, really? Or did you just mean cave? Yeah, basically man cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So your favorite place in the world is to be um, with, a, with moving ocean, moving rhythm, which is like by a lake, yeah. nature, yeah? 
Are you a tree mm -hmm. hugger? Let me see if you're my tribe. Are you a tree hugger? Yeah, I'll hug the tree, touch the tree, communicate with the tree, feel uh. the tree, be the tree, I'm the tree too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I like it, I like it. All right. Yeah. So what was you like as a child? Well, as I said before, I was just, I know myself, like, you know, as a different person, like, we, everyone is different, but let me recap. Um, when I was five, some strange stuff happened to me, and that opened my eyes from mm -hmm. a little child to start, you know, like, research, know things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things would just come to me naturally. Like, I just naturally know certain things. And growing up as a child, I was just, you know, to myself, quiet, quiet, mm -hmm. um, in my own corners, you know, just, you know, being observant, mm -hmm. you know. I was a very observant child, still observant now, more okay. observant. <laughs> Do you have a favorite word? This is the first time I'm asking anyone that question. Do you have a favorite word in the moment right now? Currently yes. in your life? what is your yeah. favorite word introspection okay expand on that please definition hello yes um that's self like basically self-reflecting like sitting down going within and you know feeling myself see what's going on within my thoughts feeling my my heart space you know you know mm -hmm. just being within within the moment feeling myself say the word Be again for us introspection Okay, I like, the, I like the way you say it. <laughs> yeah, to be introspecting, like, you know, going within. I think my yeah, favorite word right now in the moment for the last few days is bohemian soul. I, I, I love it. I'm always saying free spirit, da, 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 but it's another oh. rendition. I'm a bohemian soul. I really, I'm really digging that right now. No, I want to know what's, uh, you said a bohemian soul? Yeah, that, that is where I'm at with my favorite term and word right now for myself yeah i, I like the sound it's so ancient to sound like yeah i'm definitely yeah. that's definitely me you know everyone says like flower power or free spirit it's something that we always say but i love the individuality there's so much trend going on now that i don't yeah. always like to be a part of everything and everything so bohemian soul is my word right now all right bon so last bon please bon with your warm-up question did you want to ask something yeah um could you Go like on. Like, explain more what Bohemian means. It's almost like saying unorthodox. Um, it's still another version of free spirit. It's unconventional. It's um, the opposite of what society expects or what everyone's trending. It's everything on that side. Okay. I'm so I think look that with words, as you know, it's almost like you have a stump of a tree and then you have the theosaurus, which is the branches and it's always little extensions of that one word. So if you think of unconventional, unorthodox, um, individual, but on a whole hippie, modern day, but yet ancient, everything that is not with what everyone is, yeah, a bohemian. That is, you know, you hear about bohemian dress sense. So you see, you know, the typical hippie girls, you know, bees, long skirts, but it's almost like, a, it's not It's not necessarily in terms of style, no, it's in terms of vibration and rhythm. Yeah, okay. so. I heard about the bohem bohemian family. I heard oh, about them. Yeah. That's a whole other conversation. But yeah, as a bohemian soul right now, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Last question in a warm up zone, which is um, if you had to pick two celebrities to have drinks or dinner with, who would it be and why? Like a celebrity? It has to be celeb, yeah. Uh, I'll say uh, Beyonce. For, Ooh, for, for why? One you surprised me. Why? Uh, <laughs> the reason why, uh, I think she knows some secrets and I would like, I would love to know. I would like to sit down with her, communicate, see what type of mind she has, you know, like on a depth level. Because she's also, I think, a Scorpio riser. She and definitely myself. knows secrets, darling. It's called Secret Society. <laughs> they all know <laughs> secrets. It's probably the only secret you're going to get from her. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, her and on, a, on an astrological <laughs> level, mm -hmm. she's a Scorpio riser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has some Scorpio connection. And mm. I have like similar energy, so mm. for me, I'm thinking it would be like a good.
Connick. Interesting. Yeah. That's uh-huh. very interesting. And who's your second celebrity? Who would you choose? Um, let me go go inside now. Let me see. Uh, Anybody of your choice? There's this uh, artist back in Jamaica, ja- Janine. Mm. Uh, yeah, I like her vibe too. It's similar. She, oh, she reminds me. Janine is a female artist. Yes. Oh, I don't know that one. Okay. Yeah, she she's similar the sim the similar vibration to yours. She mm-hmm. have that vibe. She's a she she um rose from being a poet to a, a reggae artist now. Oh, okay, interesting. I'll have to check her uh-huh. out. All right, so yeah. uh, like a, a male artist would be like a bar, um vibes cartel. Yeah, definitely. I would like to sit down and talk to him based on the fact that he has a. You know, like a, a very extraordinary mind. He's super intelligent. I think people underestimate him because of how he looks and the things that he sings about. But he's hella intelligent. But that's a whole other conversation. But he is. So I don't understand why you want to reason with him. Yeah. You know, it's uh, two parts to it. The yeah. dancer and the um, reggae part. I would like to um, know Kabaka Pyramid. And that's it. Vibes Cartel and Kabaka Pyramid. I see them as being very intellectual people. Okay, uh-huh. that's your two celebrities. All right, so yeah. for the guest who has just joined, today's topic of the hour is on supernatural and anything wonderful or bizarre that you may have experienced in the Mr. Boss um, conversing today. We're going to allow you to jump on if you want to actually share any experiences or even opinions that you haven't experienced um let us know put a comment in the box or even request put a request to join and we will bring you all the way in on this live to share your opinion anything go as long as it flows right (laughs) all right so let's let's get into it let's get into it supernatural phenomena Mm -hmm. dot com go for it yeah I'm uh, going to start by saying there's a bunch of stuff that happened to me as a child. Mm. Some weird... There's, but there's one thing that he won't tell anybody. Stuff. That's what I want to know. But all right, tell us something. No, Go on. No, that part... All nah. right, all right. <laughs> tell us something, though. Give some juice. Yeah, Come right. on. Yeah, so when I was a child, I experienced um, having trap between dimensions, like... Ooh sleep paralysis where sometimes i'll feel like somebody sitting down on the bed i can actually feel the bed sink all the way in all right and then at that point i couldn't move couldn't speak but i was aware i hear everybody in the house everything i see people passing by and i'm like crying out for help nobody to help all right so at that point, I was like scared to sleep at nights. I would stay up all night and don't sleep because as soon as I close my eyes, that's it. I'm okay, like. So let, 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 let me get into it a little bit before we skip stages. How young uh-huh. were you when you first experienced sleep, as they call it in nowadays, very new term to us, yeah? Sleep paralysis. Yeah. How young? When was your first encounter with that experience? Sorry like six seven years old being young. that young and not having all the terminologies that we have today to explain stuff and put things in categories and boxes what in your interpretation as a child what do you think was happening to you yeah as you know doppy <laughs> i've been attacked by doppy by by the, the ghost as they call it that's what i um saw it to be then and there will be like sometimes I hear like whispering in my ears too. <clears throat> like, you know, things trying to communicate with me. Like, I would freak out. I wouldn't go to sleep. I'd be mm-hmm. like running to my grandma's room and I'll be safe in there. <clears throat> but as soon as I go to my bed, yeah, it, it, it felt like torturing. torturing. I was, so that I was, was a frequent tortured. experience that you were having a lot was these supernatural experiences. Uh, could you repeat that, please? That was a frequent experience you were having then. That was consistent. Yeah, it was. Wow. All the way up until when I was like around 20, 28. 
all the way up there i would have it now and then not as much as when i was a, a child because that was when the weird stuff started to happen i remember at one point right there was this old lady that lived across from uh, my house right um that's my cousin laughing at me. I know. I'm seeing someone laughing and I'm trying not to laugh, but I didn't know who it was. Go on. Yeah, she knows what's up. Hi, cousin. Uh, Go on. Yeah. I remember that old lady across from the, the house, right? Our neighbor. Mm. Um, when she died, because she, uh, she loved me. Mm, she loved Andre. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when she died, right? A couple. <laughs> couple months um, passed, I felt the same thing happened to me, right? The bed sunk down, and I woke up the next morning with my face look wet, like fat, like swollen. I was like, wow, like half of my face was swollen. And they had to pray for me at church and all of that. Wow. I was like, oh. they, they call it like, maybe I was um, attacked by a, a demon, as they would want to say it. In, in in church terminology yeah wow. the demon or dopey ghost yeah, but the my devil. face was swollen mm. uh -huh. so climbing up the ladder right experience all of that there was this one moment where i sat to myself and i just realized like this world is not what it seemed to be and at such a young age, I realized that there's some things that hasn't been told to us. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, from that very moment, until now, right, my eyes, you know, was open to certain um, awareness at a young age. And I used to go through the, the um, tribulation of not wanting, wanting to go to sleep. Can we go back right. a little bit so we can get a little bit more uh, whoo, understanding of what you thought was happening and what, so when you brought this information to your grandma saying this is what happened the first time, did your grandma take note of what was going on or did they just fuck it off like, oh, you know, it's just <laughs> screaming. What that is the important part about when you're innocent as a child and why some things, we're going to go there, but why some entities tend to interfere with children of the innocence. Do you know there's, there's levels to that? yeah so what did your grandma um say to you when you told her what you was experiencing uh like all right many times that like, they would hear me scream out in my, my sleep oh wow um, yes yeah, so you know she would pray for me and anoint me with the oil you know she, they always try to to keep like um prior meeting in the house mm -hmm. because he's a christian and you know she would rub me up with oil, make sure she anoint me and then pray for me. And you know how Christian mm -hmm. people yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that was her remedy. So, yeah. you, so you were acknowledged. So was it a case, do you know what I'm trying to say? Were you acknowledged like, yes, we know these things exist? Well, yeah. To a point where they call right. it dopey and force, yes. Right, that's important. That's important. Right. So you was able to express... Did you ever tell anyone else other than your grand what was happening? Your peers or, you know, your relatives of your age group? Or was you, how, what was that like? Yeah, when, um, like, I grew, like, in my adolescent, teenage um, years, mm -hmm. I told some friends, uh, you know, I told my, my aunt, you know, other pe people within my household know of events like that, right? So my household, they already know what's up. I told friends, you know, they told me similar experience that they had. Okay. And I heard some weird stuff too. Things be happening to people. And give us some know, examples. Like one one of my friends told me that he had an outer body experience. At that time, I didn't believe that thing was possible. And he told me that he went to sleep. And while he was sleeping, he woke up and then he saw his body laying down in the, in the sofa, right? So I was like, what? He said he, he never really wanted to tell nobody else. But, you know, based on the fact that we have similarities, yeah. he, he told me that. So I was like, 
I did some research. I found mm -hmm. out that actually they call it um, astral projection. That's the new you know terminology that everybody is mm -hmm. running with right now. Mm -hmm. So after after he told me that, you know, um, I felt like yeah, connected more to him because he experienced similarities to mine, mm -hmm. similar things, similar events. It's, it's some scary stuff, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay, so moving forward in terms of from childhood and into your, do you think it went all the way up until your twenties? Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Give us, give us, give us some egg, like. Give us some tangible stories of, and f guys, this may sound crazy to many. That's why a lot of yeah. us are going to be dubious in telling anyone because it sounds crazy, like you need to be locked up and shit. But there are, I know, there's a difference between knowing and belief. And I know that this physical that you see, there are many people walking around like you and me of totally different entities within or they lineage is not the same as yours or just do you understand i know you know what i mean so people yeah. have bizarre experiences whether it's because i'm going to throw some examples whether it's because you were just the chosen one and you're from the matrix and at the movie neo you are the chosen one yeah, yeah. and maybe you're okay. neo's wife trinity so you're going for the shit with him <laughs> yeah, do you understand but on a real note maybe there are people in your family that is of the, let's use this first, the, the, the darker side of the light. And therefore, and this, this is, I'm going to say this, not everyone who has these encounters is a stardust child from the light. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to separate my versions now. Yeah? Uh -huh. Not everyone who has these experiences are having it just because. Some people's family dabbles mm -hmm. in dark magic. Okay, or other sides of life that evokes this as a generational thing. Okay, yeah. and some people are born with what they consider to be gifts until they realize why they've got it based on people again in their generation. It could be their father's father or their mother, whatever, dabbling in stuff, and now it's fallen on the children. Okay, or it could be the lighter side of what I'm talking about, you know, the what you want to call it stardust the um light workers what you want to call it whatever term people call it nowadays where you oh. are just of a certain tribe and that's why you have certain gifts and some people don't know of any form of mother father lineage they just are able to do certain things and they have certain experiences i mean what's your thoughts on that so far Yes, real talk because I'm a plut and that's plutonic. the light version giving people the light version. <laughs> Do yeah. you understand? Yeah, um, everything you said is accurate. Mm -hmm. Total. Yeah. Because we gotta understand that the dark and the light is one. You know, and people over the ages like mystify certain things, get it confused. They use it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, it affects lineage after lineage, tribal um, forces mm -hmm. along the way, generation, people, mm -hmm. right? But what I know, know that the generation that, I'm, um, that I arose from is the Scorpio generation. Okay. And it had a lot to do with the darker side to things. Yeah, knowing that I'm a Scorpio riser also, for people that don't know what a Scorpio riser or uh, ascendant sign is, mm -hmm. it's yeah. the sign that was rising from the eastern horizon at the time of birth. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the Trinity. You mm -hmm. have the sun, the moon, and the rising sign. It's all about your physicality mm -hmm. and the depths of who you are and a mental space and a, um, a, a, a core level. To the depths of the, what the ocean is put it like that pure darkness or, okay. or dark matter. but what i want to say is that i'm a plutonic child i'm a scorpio riser so everything that is associated with the darker version of self yeah i'm gonna face it to understand what that dark side is so when i rise from that with my light i already went through that dark time of the soul from, from so you're not afraid age. you're not actually afraid of 
the dark or doing shadow work on yourself? You're not afraid of that? No, mm. because what I felt happened when I was a child, it was preparing me for my future. So let me ask you, as I've touched on what I did a few moments ago, um, in terms of where things come from and how quick people are to see things as gifts and they're not all gifts they are i i definitely know they haven't all come from a light source all right have you worked out why you individually have had these experiences from so young all the way into probably now manhood um uh, why you have you worked out why you yes i've, I've come to the realization of Knowing who I am on a soul level. And who, <laughs> who is that? This is something that I cannot speak to the public. Not okay. at all. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tribal thing. It's okay. ancient. An ancient soul coming back to, you know, just present what we are left from. We are mm -hmm. left out. Then past life situation. But that would Contact. be everybody in their own right. That's not yeah. actually... It, no, it actually is. Everyone has, um, everyone, absolutely everyone has got something. It's whether they've been activated, whether they're tapped in. We're not all called for the same purpose, but everyone has their thing. Yes. Some people well, um, could have lived a total life of misery, and then in their last age, they suddenly able to touch somebody and heal. That was their gift. Somebody else could have just had a really bad dream suddenly or an accident suddenly they turned into a clairvoyant these things are real yes so a lot of movies that we see that we see as fairy tales these movies have been created from a lot of realism that we just don't want to accept or believe in true that's really tough you know that really? i know that so i matrix one was my favorite movie literally there was so when much was there was cool. so much bars in that movie for real yeah? It was There's meant so to be date truth. night when I went to watch it, but I was so caught up in the movie. But you still, I want you to give us, I don't feel like you've given us enough examples. I feel uh -huh. like we're talking around Supernatural and we've got a minimum amount of time. And I feel like with all the experiences you've probably told me you've had, I don't, you don't have to give us the five-year-old experience that you want to keep <laughs> to your chest. Because I do believe not everything needs to be mentioned. I've had some serious experiences and some things you are not supposed to be mentioning. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I, we but, want tangible stuff that's going to make us go home tonight or, and switch on all the fucking lights. Yeah, lights some white candles up and shit. You understand? So we want to um, hear some tangible stuff from you tonight before we go into yeah. examples of astro travel, out of body experiences, and all this stuff, and soul ties, having sex in dreams. We're going to touch on all those things. Uh huh. Yeah. But so right. we want to hear some of your real life tangible experiences. Okay. So after all that I said, right? One time, I almost like lost myself totally. How? In what way? Because I went into things that I, I didn't really, you know, know as yet. Uh, soul wise, on a um, DNA level, yeah, my, my inner being know that, but my mental space wasn't ready for that. What do you and mean you went into stuff? Because, I mean, Give us what do you mean? Does that mean I'm you went in? Does that mean you started dabbling in practices and didn't know what you were doing? Yeah, I actually a lot of people like make this mistake. Go on. Yeah, I started to you know like know about like you know who I am within this body. Mm. I went mm. on by trying like to project myself, my consciousness out of my body, right? And look at look at my face. Huh? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> when, Don't play with them things. Go on. Yeah, so when that happened, there was this dog that I, um we had a bun. And it's like this dog like somehow understand me. And what I did was <laughs> I tried to heal that dog because that dog was poison. Right? <laughs> and yeah, Go it was on. like the dog was gonna die. Yeah, that was it for him. So one night I lay in my bed, I read everything about um like astral projection, you know, energy work and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I know my energy. 
So, all right, I'm going to go into this. So I lay down on my back. Now, like, feeling everything in my body. It felt like current. It, fe it felt like electricity mm -hmm. within myself. Right? So feeling that, I was, like, having the, the thought of the dog or having the image of the dog in my head. Okay. And what I was doing was giving the dog my some of my life force energy. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, sharing my energy my spirit right so at one point laying down i felt like i was floating i, I felt nothing I, all i felt was this static feeling within inside of me so you right? went you went into realms now you're heading into realms now yeah i yeah. felt myself like going totally blank and at one point i felt like my heart was on the last beat fuck's sake so i stopped i woke up and I was like, you know, shock. I was like, what's going on? I never felt nothing like that before. Because I'm like, all over my body, I felt like that electric flow all over my body. So I was trying to do it again. And it didn't happen. So I don't know what happened. I fell asleep. I um, rose up the next morning. I felt a tap on my leg from my cousin. And he was like, Andre, Andre. I'm like, I'm sleeping. So he said, yo, the dog. The dog is outside. I'm like, huh? I said, hell no. Uh, so I went and looked. I saw the dog, like, you know, the dog sit up, tail wiggling and everything. And I remember he had some green kind of thing in his eye and it wasn't there no more. So I was like, nah, nah, I don't even believe that. So you, uh, said, so let me, let me interpret that real quick. You <laughs> thought like your little experiment has healed the dog. Exactly. You went into doggy land and you healed the dog. Not really the doggy land. It was a connection. I told you uh, from the beginning, a connection between me and that dog. In everything at all, the way people connect, mm. whether to animals or human mm -hmm. beings, we mm -hmm. hear energy. Everything is energetical. Everything. I'm like that with We're... horses, though. Admittedly, I'm like that with horses. So yeah. Yeah. So where your attention goes energy flows there yeah because yeah. Where, where your focus goes that's where the energy is gonna go yeah. and my focus was on that dog i'm like i'm gonna heal this dog because i knew certain things from a little child growing up and i tested out certain things and I, I was always experimenting so that night when i went and experiment something bad happened to me so what, right? what would you say was the bad thing that you said you felt like your your heart was gonna what happened the last beat or something like that you said yeah, I felt like I was going to, you know, when you fall asleep, but you don't know how you fell asleep, mm -hmm. right? It was something like that. It's like I was going into a deep space. Mm -hmm. And I tapped out of it because I don't know what I'm going to get myself into. So I woke up. Mm -hmm. and I didn't went back into that state no more. because I was trying to, but I didn't get the chance to. However, when I woke up that morning and I saw the dog, there was a little thing inside of me that, yeah, that's possible. So yeah, it's possible. Mm. yeah, long story short, after a couple of days, the dog died. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I experiencing was, what I experienced was me not being myself no more. I would start hear like things from a distance. I would start feel everybody's energy. Like it's and so. And this, this like, is after you done that, right? Yes. Let me put something to you, right, and viewers. I understand that we're living in a time, this is something that I, I'm very observant, and I definitely am aware that I'm in a time where people are so triggered by experimenting that it's crazy. Now hear me out. Naturally, we are adults. We're all governed by ourselves. We do as we please. And a lot of people are on this thing of, oh, my ancestors did it. You know, um, why are we afraid of this? And I say to myself, number one, everything is not for everyone. Okay? Everything is not for everyone. One remedy does not fit all. Like a shoe size, yeah? And we are in a different time than our ancestors. So there are so many practices that I know that a whole bunch of people are practicing that I would never consider. It's not just because of being afraid. It's about knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens.
And that also means that not everything ancestral is good. Just because it's African and ancestral, do, what, do you believe that everyone African had a good heart? Hell no. People, people have actually lost it on this, you know, everything's a shay and everything's, like there's a level of people that are trying to become woke, but it's going deeper to sleep. They're not aware that just because it comes under African, it doesn't mean everything is good. So True. people are now just buying everything, hocus pocus, doing everything. <laughs> and I'm like, people have no idea what they, oh, the portholes they opening up. They, yep. I, I don't really have to even know half the knowledge people know to know that, that. Because for me, you can be knowledgeable via books and you can be spirit realm knowledgeable. Okay, there's so many things where my spirit would say, that's not for you. That is not for me. So you see all these experiments, like what you just done. No, Jose. There are people yeah, that that's... have to project unintentionally. Because obviously, when we sleep every night, we are traveling. Yeah, we're traveling. We're, 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 we're actually traveling, naturally. Uh -huh. But when you get people now that are, I mean, I, mean, I had a friend, and she told me that a guy was able to tell her everything about her apartment. And he's never been there. A guy that's wanted her forever oh, from childhood, yeah? yeah. And it uh -huh. turned out that he actually, I'm going to tell you straight people, lay down on his bed, meditated intentionally. So he left his body and in spirit realm traveled to her house and just watched everything that was happening in her apartment. Every now, this is not for everyone yeah. who don't believe it. I get it. Yeah. But I know, we know. Okay. Yeah. Now this guy was quite troubled because he came up. He grew up in a Christian church, and then he went into the. I don't know if you know much about Noabian way of life. Yeah, you know, um, preach a lot of blackness, but also a lot of white hatred, and there's a lot of you know religious groups and cultural groups out there. And he was dabbling in all sorts of mess. Uh huh. Okay. And what I'm saying is that people. This is the reason why I'm finding with people, energy, eating, things like, lots of different things that I don't dabble in because you don't really know what people are into now or what language they're coming from. So the moral of the story for me is I don't practice everything because it's everyone right now is into, you know, um, tarot cards. Everyone, uh, this is where we're at. Look on most people's of a certain energy People like myself, should I say, as well, and deeper, look on their profiles. Everyone's a witch, proud witch. Everyone's a tarot reader. Everyone's got oracle cards. Everyone is into, you know, uh, astrology. It, it, it's just, there's a lot of trending going on. And to be honest, probably only 5% are the real ones. True. Real. Real talk. What did Erica Badu say about 85 or 80% of people are followers? A few percent are the other are the leaders, and a five percent are the trend. Are actually the, the trendsetters. Mm -hmm. So, me personally. But anyway, I'll pause. All right. So, uh, let's talk about so in terms of phenomena, ghosts. Ghosts. And we're gonna go back. Actually, let's do it now. Let's read some comments now before we lose track and people start trying to relate to what we last spoke about yeah yeah so this th th see this kind of conversation i need folks to come up to jump on this live and give me some real life real because this time i know people's had deep deep experiences i can give you many but i want people uh -huh. to share that with me on the live so let me see uh all right all right let's have a look mm Hmm. Let me see, babe, me. Hey, Doc, what's popping, bruv? Okay. Let me see. I've got my brother and my nephew in the live today. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about... All right. So first of all, I'm half Dominican, half Jamaican. Yeah? Not Dominican Republic, Dominica, and half Jamaican. So therefore, I've got... I've got mixed, mixed culture and what we believe in. Yeah? So my mom has given me a lot of educated experiences from growing up, what she's seen, what she hasn't. And I don't just take it on board because it's my mom. I just know 
yeah, from the glare in her eye that she's seen what she's seen and she knows what she knows. My dad, on the other hand, pretends that none of this exists. He don't want to know about these things. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so culturally, I know whether you're African, especially African, Asian, Irish, and Caribbean, there's a lot of history, Haitian, and so on. There's a lot of history. All right? So in terms of, like, ghosts... Is there anyone on this live that has experienced seeing a ghost, felt the presence of something, or maybe you're one of those people that love to experiment too and start calling up seance and start bringing up ghosts? Andre, what's your thoughts? Well, the term ghosts mm. are supernatural. Ghosts, basically, duffy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's basically understanding that on this earth, this planet, we have ancient, ancient, ancient energies still mm. around, mm. right? And these ancient energies mess around with people on a low vibration, right? Oh, you so think those, it's only those on a low vibration? No, I'm, I'm going to get into that. All right, go right? on. But mostly based on fear, mm. right? When people mm -hmm. are in the, the, the level of fear, anything can attack. And yeah. that's what was, was, um, that's one of the reasons why I was attacked as a child too, because mm -hmm. I was fearful. And sometimes when people are fearful, they create those scenarios. Wow. They attract those scenarios to them based on mm -hmm. fear. So based on that energy of the heart and of the mind, mm -hmm. we, we create that fearful energy within our heart and our mind transcend those thoughts mm. when our mind transcend those thoughts there are energy signatures all around us right those who are of the lower vibration realms they sense mm. those yeah so you see like kids who are very scared they normally get attacked in their sleep or they, they get their electromagnetic energy sucked drained what, what would the children initially be scared of would you say it's based on the fact that the lineage too, you know, right. is in their dream. You know, so growing up, it's on the mother and the father based on the chromosomes shared, the, the, the genetical um, patterns that mm. are shared to that child. They're going to experience some of those scenarios too mm. in their heart. Because the heart is, is, is an ancient soul vibration. It's way more stronger than all the other chakras that we have mm -hmm. it's where we meet in balance you know from the higher dimension to the lower dimension merging into one basically light and dark right so ghost is nothing but energy that is scattered out there that doesn't have a vessel no vessel the loss are um condemned are you know, like, got, like, can't reach to where they need to go based on the fact mm. that they don't have enough uh, magnetism, you know, not mm -hmm. enough light, mm -hmm. right, to, to travel, right? A lot of people got killed too early. Mm. And there's a thing with the moon, and there's a, 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 a place that they call purgatory. Mm hmm Right, for um, lost souls or souls that cannot make it over to the other side, our energy, basically light, mm -hmm. right? That's a, the source of energy. What that I'm talking about is a soul energy. Mm -hmm. Our soul was meant to collect information, you know, store information, keep storing that light, keep bringing more awareness, bringing more um, electric charges negative charges to create that electromagnetism mm -hmm. so it can travel when it leaves this physical body it travels to where it need to go the soul data but we have been bombarded with so much things that is stopping us from making our way out of this hell all right so, so let me let me put aside technicality because i think that Sometimes we can watch documentaries and we can go on YouTube and we can talk how we're speaking. 
But I uh-huh. often think also that people, as general beings, we want tangible information and testimonies to share beyond the technicalities. So, have you seen a ghost, Boo Boo? I want to say, seen a <laughs> ghost. Seen I before. Have, you, have you seen anything for yourself? Let's start there. All right. What I heard, I didn't see anything, but I had an uncle that passed away, right? And I remember my family and I, we were in one, one room. Everybody was scared out of them shoes. All right, so <laughs> everybody was in one room, closed the door. Remember, the entire house is locked up, right? Everything locked. Mm-hmm. Nobody out in the living room, not anything at all. Oh, that Christy. Oh. All I heard was this door, bam, bam, like loud, like somebody was literally knocking on that door, right? Nobody said nothing. All I went, I was like laying down, I'm like staying there in the morning, we discussed this. Yeah, so I experienced that too. I didn't see, I didn't see any ghosts before now, anything like that. All I do is feel certain things. Whenever there's a strange type of thing, I feel it, and my head start go like this, expanding. I can feel that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So after that night, again, I was like, yeah, there's some things going on in this world that we don't know about. Because w- no one else was in that house. No one else. Everybody was in that one room, the door closed, and I heard that now. Loud, like, like, <laughs> loud. Who could All have right. done? So before we, before we, would you believe an hour's rolled in already? So before we go on, is there anybody on this live that wants to share any real, tangible, supernatural experiences? If so, let me know, comment, press, request, jump on the live, vibe with us, yeah? All right, so I'm going to give some, a, f- a couple of, ex- ex- you know, mild experiences. Mild? I don't know. Yeah, all right. Let me go all the way back. When my son was very young, I'm talking about five and six, where mm-hmm. he was not raised at that time hearing about ghosts. We didn't watch horrors like I did as a kid, but not, you know, once I had him, I just kind of feel like it's kind of entertaining, you know, sources of, so I stopped watching those things. Um, he didn't know anything. He was not influenced. That's very important to um, allow you to know before I even go into the story. And then one day, all of out of the blue, he says, Mom, um, that lady, that old lady keeps coming and tickling me. Uh, what old lady? Yeah, what old lady? Oh, she comes. He didn't see, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't uh, joyous with it, but he wasn't afraid. So, oh, she's, she comes and she tickles me. And I don't, he didn't like it, but he said, the old lady comes. And I said, to him, I was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe you watch something. He said it again, and he said it again. So I said to him, right, it sounds like you are being, you know, visited. Basically, I knew what that was. I was so scared. Yeah, so scaredy pants. And I said to him, I'm going to teach you how to pray, and I'm going to teach you how to rebuke, as in curse in a way. Okay? When he told me that, I decided to sleep in his bed. No word of a lie, I was 100%, no smoking, no drinking, I was all there, okay? I slept in his bed, and that night I slept in his bed, I remember being woken up by hearing, ooh, 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 up the stairs, like footsteps up the stairs. Now in my head, because I was so scared, yeah, the scared soul, I'm like, this is not happening, maybe it's next door, you know? Mm-hmm. The minute I felt inside of me that the spirit was, or whatever you want to call it, was aware that my son was not by himself that night, the few steps that I heard had just stopped. It just stopped. When I woke up properly, sat up, the footsteps stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, and I was scared. Well, what if I see something? What am I going to do? Anyway, I rebuked it. I didn't see anything, thank God. And my son never experienced that ever again. <laughs> now, 
my son and I, same age group, he was around six. Uh-huh. And we were at the train station. Back then days, I was always riding the train. And we lived in Surrey. And, you know, sometimes trains have huge gaps away from the platform. Yeah? Yeah. And he just randomly said, my son's not a talkative person, never has been. And he randomly said, Mom, your bag's going to fall in the train tracks, so put it on your back properly. And I'm like, how's my bag going to fall in the train tracks? It's on my shoulder. I don't know how this happened, and I don't know how he knew. But as I got to get on, the, as I went to step onto the train, my bag fell into the train rails. Wow. And the it's man, the, yeah, the, the, you know the, the people at the station, as I flagged him down, they had to come and hook it out and let me know. So you're saying that he has a strong intuition? But he's not tapped in anymore. And then the third evidence was I was dating somebody after my son's father and I stopped seeing each other. And I don't listen to everything children say, but there was already a couple of red flags. And my son didn't know any of this. And he sat on the stairs one day and he tapped me and said, It's okay, Wami. He is real fishy. Mm 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 mm. Where did he even get that word? Yeah, where did that come from? I remember, he's not seen any evidence. He's a child. There's no volatile behavior. Just little things that I've seen as red flags. And my son was like, no, mom. Like, in other words, him, no. Yeah. And you it know, was nothing children, that he was doing to me. Minute. It was just an inner thing that I discovered a year and a half later. Multiple things. Yeah. So my son, when he was younger, had these abilities um, without anyone kind of enforcing or influencing. And he's not tapped in anymore. But what, what, what would you say about something like that? The examples I've given you so far. Basically, as I said, you know, children, has, they carry strong electromagnetism, you know, fresh. So their, their intuition is well, like, strong. Mm. You no, know, they can project themselves way far. And some, some of these children are old soul too. Mm. You know, definitely tucked all the way in. Right? So mm. after growing, 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 you know, seeing all of these movies, getting the, the dirty water and all of that, that limit their capacity of being tapped in, being connected to, 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 to source. Mm. Right? Because a lot of children came into this world to bring some sort of awareness with them to help somebody to gain that awareness too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I've, no, I've it's had good. multiple experiences where I can't remember how. I'll, I'll give you the first one. Let's get some tangible stuff now, okay? Um, <laughs> I remember I just moved, I think it was my last property. Mm -hmm. And no, I had lived there for a while actually, and I decided I'm going to change my room because even though in everyday lifestyle I like I like new, I like to I like I like difference. I don't like the same routines, but in terms of my home and furnishing, I like things to stay where they are. I'm not one that moves my house around very often in terms of furniture. Yeah, and so I just decided I'm going to move my bedroom my, my bedroom around, and I was like, yep, yeah, you know, turn the bed around. Let me tell you. As soon as I took my bed around and put it in a total different position, I started to experience being pinned down in my bed. Yeah. Yeah, I was fine. I, I think that was the first time I ever experienced it. I literally felt like someone was pinning me down, you know, where you can't scream, you can't move, you can't, what they want to call it now, whatever they want to call this modern day, you know, sayings. But, and my friend said to me, whoever lived in that house before, don't want you there, girl. Put your bed back. Um, and this happened night after night until I put my bed back and then it stopped. Yeah. Uh, something similar happened to me too. But it wasn't based on no arrangement of the bed nor anything like that. Mm -hmm. It happened to me like a couple of times where, you know, something sat on me and I couldn't move. I felt that, right? I was sunk mm -hmm. all the way into the bed. Something sat on me, yeah? No joke. Mm -hmm. No, no spooky thing. Like, was it someone people sat think, on you or did you feel like someone was holding you? How, how did it, it's like, where were you? Did you feel the pressure in your body? In my back. I was laying wow. down. 
in my belly where I faced down and I felt this thing sat in my in my back. I felt the pressure. I felt my bone, yeah? It was heavy, right? So people think like these things are some spooky things that some people didn't never experience these things mm -hmm. before. So hearing these things, it's like what these people are talking about. But mm. my tes testimony, your testimony, we know what's I've had, up. I've had a number of things. I've had a number, but you know, this, you know, with me, I'm one of those people where I do have an array of questioning. So in one breath, I would say, why is it happening to me? Let's start there. Is it something that I've brought onto myself? I don't mean just to self-blame, but explore. Because we often like to externalize everything. Oh, it's that person, or it's this person, and that toxic person who came into my house. Sometimes it's you. You right. create... This is the thing that the people and they, uh, you know, social media and posts, and I think to myself, half the posts I see, you're posting. But have you asked yourself whether you have brought that into your life? Whether it's, whether it's a garment, an ornament someone you slept with or whether you played with a Ouija board when you was younger, portholes and entities and how we invite things into our life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. you could just sleep with someone that's going through or has gone through something so, tra so traumatic or whether it's, let's just say, oh, they're from a certain lineage. You, they've had an energy exchange of you and boy, now you're locked into a whole different realm of what you've mm -hmm. got on you now. It's, th these things are very, there's so many layers that I wish there was someone on the live who'd be willing to come and speak on deeper elements so that I know we can further the bounds of this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, based on soul ties, are. Uh, okay, let's based get into on soul what ties. Before, what you said before about, um, you know, join things towards you. So, yeah, things you like that. You bring elements to yourself, some, not always. But often we do, we don't, we, we're not aware of it. Yeah. But the thing is, most of us are, we are, a, basically we are star systems to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And everybody carries a different coding, a blueprint to themselves, all right? Mm -hmm. So some people do have a stronger connection towards certain things. Yeah? And based on your heart chakra, some people are empaths. They feel a whole lot of things in their heart space. And... When, when that happens, it's like we can pull things to, to our heart space based on how um, magnetic it is. And when it mm -hmm. does, mm -hmm. we do attract um, a lot of these things towards ourselves based on the fact that we are connected to it, connected to people who have their karma. Now we end up pulling on their karma, right? Their situations in our life, livelihood. Now it becomes a part of us, soul tie. You know, soul connection. Now we experience what they experience because we have a connection to them. Can you give us one rendition of what you would say a soul tie is? Because I know there's people always think it's just, I'll give, well, I'll give an example there. When we hear the word soul tie, we often just see it as someone that you've been madly in love with and now you can't get rid of them and you can't let them go and you're so caught up and I'm so in love. Sometimes you are so tied to even a freaking, your pastor, a soul tie. Someone that you yeah. find it unbearable to detach from, and it's not always a good spirit. No, um, remember, well, as I said, we are basically star systems. Some of us came down here with similar genetical coding, spiritual coding. All right, so we have we can see people in the street, and you look at them, you just feel that connection like, oh, yeah, that person is like you know them, yeah. That's a soul connection, a soul tie. There's similar source. Star I wouldn't systems. say that's a soul tie. I wouldn't say that's a soul tie. If you look up, you look up the word soul tie, it wouldn't be that's, that. That's what, that's what they say. All right? Who's, who's that's they? What, that, that, that's what um, certain people who write. I would their, say soul be... connection, but a soul tie. If you're walking uh -huh. down the street and you felt down, you can keep walking. That's not a soul tie. If you look at the word, uh -huh. the, what the word tie is. Yes, uh, yeah. it's a that's why people right? have to end up praying, getting pastors to actually break this thing. So it's not like someone walking down the street having an attraction. It's deeper than that. Yeah, that, yes, I like the fact that you said it's that. 100% it's 100% deeper, deeper, deeper than that. If you research it, yourself, that. yeah. It's deeper than that, but a soul tie. All right, say for instance, right? So connection, that sounds like. A soul connection is a, a soul tie. Remember, 
When you say a soul connection is still a tie, it's a connectivity, same way, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> imagine, um, you, like, as a soul coming down into this earth, mm -hmm. there's a, another version of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a different body, right? Mm -hmm. For some reason, walking down the lane, going somewhere, boom, you know, you something about that person right your whole being can feel it your for me, for me that'd be my that'd be my twin flame or a twin that's not flame. a word that a lot of people use uh, that'd be my twin uh, flame yeah uh, if you see these words if we follow these words mm. it will throw us all over the place because what these people do with terminologies is use it to confuse us but that, right? that, no but the thing is that's what they do but if you remember okay prince said the singer prince said the internet is there to be used. Don't let it use you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So everything that we know is going to be in boxes, categories, labels. No matter how much we want to get away from it, labels. Now, of course, it's like saying breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a word that's being used, and we still use it. Yeah? So I feel like yeah. we, I feel like the confusion is, is when we want to change the meaning of something that's been given a definition. And that's me being fooled. Like people may say the Bible and something's been rewritten, okay? If yeah. the word soulmate, if you look up the word soulmate, it's not half the things that people want to say it is. That's their own version. You could be my soulmate and I've never met you before. My friend could be my soulmate. So people longing to meet their soulmate, I could bump, I bump into mine every five minutes down the street. Uh huh. But a yes. twin flame is, a, is that's because the reason why not a lot of people know of it is because it's very really used. It's very interesting and very arty in its form. But a twin flame is a lot deeper than a soulmate. Now, we didn't um, make the words up, but for the definition, it's a lot the deeper than yeah. a soulmate. But for the definition, yeah, you will get away by saying that, but all of them is the same thing. All of them. I don't know. All of them. All right. You see, a soul, <laughs> a soul, right? A soul is a mm -hmm. completion of oneself, mm -hmm. right? The whole mm -hmm. your energy become connected, right? Mm -hmm. When you meet another person who is connected like that on a soul level with all their energy being connected, you become one, one force. Like, this would be like me and you, you connected, one becoming force one with force. Them. One force with them is a connection. It doesn't have to be sexual. I don't think you have to right? need one source to be connected. That's I don't think that's true. Because how many people? I'm um, guys. Jump in the comments box with me here because you're just sitting there quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Listen. Let me, let me, let me, this is where we mean you love it now. When we go toe to toe. Yeah. Spice it up. Yeah. Here's mean, what yeah. it is. I'm not going to challenge your belief, but I'm going to tell you what I know, which is different to belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is correct for you. So I'm not going to challenge you. That's correct for you. But if I have a connection with somebody, doesn't mean it's holistic. That's why enough people have turbulence and trouble in a relationship. They're very connected on a soul level. Doesn't mean, so yeah. if, I'm, if I'm, remember, how could I possibly be holistically and wholesomely like one with everyone I've met when people are still struggling to be one of themselves? No, brother, I can't be right. I mean, the majority right, of us isn't even one of ourselves. There's, so how there's could I be one with another person? There's levels to it. Um, I'm telling you, all right. No, there's levels, levels to, to everybody, where... but it's not possible for me to be one of one of multiple people that could be my soulmate. My friend could be my soulmate. My male friend, you could be my soulmate because soulmate. Right. But a twin uh, flame uh, is a direct. It's like two two hearts, two like two people in one body. All right, let me, let me explain this on a, the, yeah. uh, a more like understandable level. Mm -hmm. Where you look on a house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In order for the house to have light, it needs two main connections, right? Okay. Go on with it. Yeah. The, the feminine and the masculine, mm -hmm. which is the same thing as electric and magnetic, electromagnetism. Everything breaks down to that. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is that when a person becomes whole, be balanced with self, right? Both right, feminine and masculine energy becoming one, mm -hmm. they they actually harmonize what a soul is supposed to be. A soul is a light, right? right? A light. 
the house produce light based off of that electromagnetic energy mm -hmm. our beam produce that light based on our own electromagnetic energy what they would call the car the prana the breath the chi the key the all the same oh, thing yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. And that yeah yeah so what i'm trying to say is that a person can be so holistic to merge with, a, with another person and that person become whole too it's, it's this is no made up thing nor me trying to add to to what is there no, no, i don't it's think the, you want to add to it yeah 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 it's just the this truth is, this is, this is, no this is your version of the truth and this is what we've got to be mindful of, right? Let, let me tell you this now. I am very aware of saying my opinion, my belief, my experience. And if it isn't mine, I should be able to give tangible evidence for fact to lead people to go and research for themselves. So what you're saying, whether you've read it from a book, remember everything that you know, a big percentage of all that we know did not come from out the mother's womb and we just knew it. We've adopted information along the way from somebody else's theory, somebody else's book, somebody else's, this, remember, it's all research. And a lot of those people that's written these things has come and said 10 years later, oh, upon research, I was wrong there. You've had pastors come and say what they thought they believed is now something else. So that's why I'm saying knowledge is always updating itself. And that's why I can't always say things are facts. Yeah, I mean, that knowledge, mm. I learned when people go and research, but you have the knowledge within. That's what you I'm saying. So it's, the, it's, the it's, your, it's your opinion with your definition of your, within, within thyself. All right, put it like this. My gnosis, right? Say, for instance, I have my gnosis. Mm -hmm. There is a whole galactic book that is there for one to access, to mm -hmm. know what they're mm -hmm. supposed to know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I'm saying I know what I know because I, I know how to tap into that information. The Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. It says in the Bible, if your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you'll be saved. What I mean by that, to be saved, is to be the whole, what they call the Holy Ghost. People jumping up on church and getting in spirit. They are getting what into the Holy Ghost. Ghost to you? The Holy Ghost it's, it's your, your, your own being, your own spirit, your own soul, your own chi, your car, tapping into that rhythmical vibration of, of self. And that's not what the church's recognition is. You do know yeah. that. They're not going to see it as that because they don't, they don't know what we know. Yeah. So, so, so can you please, as you've mentioned that, can you please tap into the church's version versus what you say the opposite version is? Well, the church version is um being touched by christ right we right. feel the presence of christ so when they have that feeling in themselves that that good feeling when you feel it in your heart space you want to move you want to cry out you want to shout talking in tongues mm. yeah speaking tongues because they're to them under the anointed anointing of god right which is them own self mm. and i'm not trying to bash nobody nor anything like that i'm saying that we need to know our our temple because they say mm. our body is a temple and God lives within us, right? What is mm. God? If our body is a temple and God lives within us, and then it goes and say that we are gods, we are like gods, and then it goes and say, if your eye becomes single, your whole body shall be full of light. Huh? So that being soulful, being having having your soul turned on, your being turned on, your light is shining mm. based out of your electromagnetism. So going back mm. to what a ghost or a holy ghost is, or any sort of phenomena, is based off of the electromagnetic space and other signatures of energies that are out there that we normally attract to ourselves mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis based on the fact that we work like a conduit, a soul tie, a soul bond, a soul contract, a soul mission. There you go. Talk to us. You touched on that now. What would you say your rendition is, the difference between a soul tie and a soul contract? A soul contract is the fact that we 
most of us chose to come back here and have our 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 mind memories everything white knowing that that's gonna happen so we signed the contract of coming back here to help knowing that we're not going to remember anything at all no we have soul ties we have soul go uh, back a moment go back one moment how would you say that people has gone about um signing a soul contract all right remember we, what, 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 what do people do when they actually sign a soul contract all right look we as this physical being here right now we have other bodies that exist out of this world where we have the ability to tap into other um, forms of ourself which people not, most people not going to really believe this because it wasn't taught to them right but once you are tapped into the universal principles of life you gain access to the higher dimensions what they would call fifth dimension right now we are fifth dimension has always been here right it's just that it's new age to people fifth dimension mm -hmm. means your fifth element the fifth element is the the ether right connecting to ether as like a computer or a laptop or any device has to have that ether present for their internet to operate we are the internet right mm -hmm. we connect to mm -hmm. ether, the lamb's book of life that's our our um way of communicating with our far out ancestors mm -hmm. here there and everywhere right so what i'm saying a soul contract right we didn't always have this body most of us not every one of us if you know that you're a soul you know that you already signed some contract to come here everything is a signature right in order for a person to go from one school to the other or get some sort of documents or anything bank um checks or anything you gotta sign that you gotta sign a contract so your belief system would be that um people actually have made an agreement to come here and obviously has looped their living and you know passing through realms experiences living dying you believe that people have to have a so what if someone decided they weren't going to have a contract so I, I, this is why i would have wished somebody else to be on this live as well who's actually can control yeah. this three four different ways as opposed to me yeah because i, I know a lot of the things that we're discussing somebody who's from thailand would have a whole different rep a whole nother level to hit on this same conversation a whole fact give an example a typical londoner or even you know caribbeans who's who's in london from my experience i've got an old dragon tattoo that i had on my back from oh god 29 years ago i think it is yeah which i've been trying yeah. to get covered over forever and all of a sudden you know growing up and having this dragon on my back for how many years a lot of few church people have said you've got the mark of the beast on your back yeah it's a dragon it's the mark of the beast now thankfully i've never been someone that just taps into everyone's philosophy because i'm very much got my own clairvoyant and spiritual discernment i've been born of it so i've always been someone that is open to learn but if something feels wrong to me then i then i'll, I'll go with that but yeah i pull up in thailand and I've got something, I've got good luck charm on me, as far as they're concerned. <laughs> Do you see why it's good to travel? Mm -hmm. The importance of traveling, because a lot of people just look in a book constantly. When you travel out of just books and TV documentaries, there's a whole different level of, of expansion. So imagine that I never traveled, I'd be thinking, oh my God, I've got the mark of the beast. I stepped somewhere else like Mauritius. No, not Mauritius. Um, where did I go? No, Dominican Republic. Yeah. Well, they concern, I'm seen as a not a good woman, like a real not good woman. Guess why? Because I've got tattoos. But we don't mean you, madam. We don't mean you. But, you know, generally, you <laughs> have, I saw one woman in, in the whole of a Dominican Republic with tattoos. So you're not seen as a kind of desirable woman based on not even spirituality, just you're not. No matter who you are, what your credits are in life, you're not. You're not. 
So what I'm saying is, we have to be mindful that we cannot keep saying everything is facts when it comes to these things, because culturally and religiously, everywhere else you go will have a different rendition and it wouldn't be yours. True. So we but, cannot actually say, if you think about what I'm saying, it's impossible for me to say, yeah, your one version is for the whole entire universe. No. No, I would say... But you can't we all, are yeah, that's some of your opinion from what you believe, but it's not going to no. be everyone's. I would put it, put it like this. It's a piece of the puzzle, all right? It's a piece it's of the puzzle, piece of for sure, puzzle. for sure. To add to the, the, the pieces for other people to see that version of it. Because all we're doing, yeah. we put it yeah. connecting the dots. Right? I'm not saying, all right, I could paint it in a different way and somebody mm -hmm. see it in a different way based mm -hmm. on the fact how I'm painting it, mm -hmm. based on the fact that I understand it. So I can paint it however I want mm -hmm. because I have that perspective of what it is. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. in a, in a, a different one, culture, so it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a different culture, they might see it differently based on the fact that that's their culture. But remember, all of us are programmed in certain ways in our culture, right? And to know the deeper meanings, you know, to, to our, our existence, we got to dig, we got to be connected, we got to be rooted and grounded in the, 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 the connection of the All Almighty. Right, which is our universal principles, our law of attraction, our law of self being connected. Mm -hmm. You know, so once we are con have that connection to self, because in every monastery are some, right, in some monuments, there's this um, these words know thyself, mm -hmm. know thyself first, right? This, that's the first principle. When you know self so much, you know another person because you can see some of you and somebody else. Hundred percent. Right? So when when we have those principles and, and things that we know of self, it's easy to tap in. If we're not believing in our school system that wants us to be like this twenty four seven in a book. If I read a book, it has to show me something that I never know before, and it has to be real. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm knowledge is power, but obviously, at the same time, I think people are, you would get one person that studied a thousand things, one minute they're Muslim, next minute they're this, next minute they're, because they, people are searching so much that we're not feeling, we're not feeling, we're not, you know, and I understand sometimes not everyone's born with the spirit of the sermon. So you're going to tap into a thousand things and experiment a thousand things or define your true self. But you know what I've realized? It's almost the people that can barely read and write. I'm more trust when it comes to knowledge. You know why? Because they're living off pure vibration, nothing that they've read. I, I'm going to be, this is what yeah. I've noticed. I'm stripping it all back. I want to actually yeah. unlearn myself. That's where I'm at in my life, you know. I'm trying to unlearn, unlearn, to learn. Because again, the heavy crowd following. Like I said to you, come off my page now and visit profiles. You're going to see the trends. On most people that I know, look at what their profile says. The heavy yeah. of crowd influence. And everyone's like, I'm different. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I actually think the people that are not even on social media is the one that are different right about now. Yeah. You understand? I mean, people like true. my dad who still don't want a mobile phone, he's different. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> For, for, for us right now, we, we're in this technological age. For me, I'm in it to connect to people like oh, you. No, I'm we're we're content creators, of course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. with your observers. But I'm saying, think about that. The more we pick up on stuff and the more knowledgeable we become, we, it, is, it is empowering. But also, uh, there's also a sense of disconnection because it's reading and research, which is great. But look at the man in the bush the man in the village the auntie in the mountains that we grew up even hearing about in books or documentaries can't read a damn word and she would sit there probably just rub one rock and be like be careful when you turn left go south go those are the you know, I, you know i can't wait to go to india and then because i actually want to i love the gurus of these people that can barely even read and write i can't even see but they see 
yeah. they're not, it's not even about a third eye it's their first eye they're the pun the first, first eye business first eye not third everyone's yeah, on this first, first eye because you heard about it but i like the first eye version because it's very really used the two that yeah. i see you know the two that you're visual with but the one that you really see with yeah and that's what they spoke about in their bible too when the eye becomes you single yeah man the whole body becomes aware I, I mean, so, yeah, man, go on. this this whole supernatural thing is based on the fact that we are connect connected to all different layers of energy right 100%. And, yeah and what i want to touch on the reason why some people can't tap in when they realize right mm. their, their their third chakra root chakra sexual chakra has been I'm damaged i'm going to go on to that i was going to go on to that let's get into that yeah, yeah that's the one there so when you say the sexual chakra is damaged that's more interesting than what i was going to say tell me about that let's sit on that for a moment uh, the sexual chakra yes remember when you have a live sexual chakra right expression is is nothing you know you speak all the realms of yourself because mm. it's expression is creativity right it's flowing now when you have a, a a sexual chakra that is damaged it's based on the fact that there's no no energy flow going through there to give it the right momentum of energy that it's supposed to get to spin it to make it your body more active now what they did to us as human beings they allowed us all right eat everything go there eat there just eat 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 I'm always Remember, telling people that. I'm always telling people about that. Go on. Talk to me, please. So, so, Go on. Yes. So, 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 no, no. We are a walking, <laughs> talking tree. We are a walking, talking tree. We are the tree of life. Yeah. Right? This is, this is us throwing down everything into our roots. And I'm talking yes. about, um, about myself too because mm -hmm. I do this. We're not, we're not perfect. Yeah, none of us are okay. perfect. We have our moments. Yeah, we're trying, really. we're trying to redeem ourselves now. Mm -hmm. So what people do, go, go, go up down everything and damage the roots of self. Mm. Now, when the roots is damaged, the energy cannot rise to the main seven chakras yeah. to give mm -hmm. um, full enlightenment to the mind. Now, the sexual chakra that everybody loves so much, yo, we find out that nowadays a lot of people, um, sexual chakra is damaged. No, How sex is not the same anymore. No no, in your opinion and your knowledge, because this is, this is something that could be based on knowledge now, not just opinion, you see? This is yeah. very easy to translate, not so much in phenomena. How <laughs> does someone know? It's true, phenomena, you can be, scientists have been trying to work out for decades. So with this uh -huh. now, it's more factual as well, yeah? So how would someone know if their they sexual chakra is damaged? Or, yeah, damaged, closed, whatever you want to call it. Block. I call it blocked, actually. But how would someone know? First, um, lack so of someone creativity. someone having sex, love sex, have no issue attracting the, the, you know, the sex of their choice, the gender of their choice, but always have turbulences within that area what what was that someone would you say has a damage chakra or what is that interpretation would you say that could lead to a damage chakra of course based mm. on the fact that all right, some people have the nurture time when this time comes and feel that feeling you feel honey oh, yeah, i want some sex right mm -hmm. yeah it come but it doesn't last as long as how it's supposed to last it's just a back back and that's it the pleasure come and goes quick instant now when either the man or the woman would that be the man or the woman yeah yeah get the little quickie afterwards <laughs> the pleasure is gone right mm -hmm. you know have you know um sexual energy to be arose again which that sexual energy is supposed to be arose all the way up to the pinnacle to give have you experienced that, that, that your damn self oh wow Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, my experience. Yeah, experience. What did that you do to get back your energy chakra in your sexual realms? Did you drink root drink, strong back, Guinness? What no. did you drink? What did you do? What kind of tonic you take, my boy? Oh, oh. 
I was, I was in, um, drinking energy. Somebody's laughing. Let me add some laughs with it. Let's liven up this, 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 this thing here. Okay. Yeah? So, all right. We have that sexual chakra, right? Yeah. Remember, as like I said, everything goes down into our roots. Mm. Right? Our roots get black up. Right? Enough. All right. It's like a car. The car driving, but it's not getting the right flow, nor the right, you know, acceleration we're supposed to get because there's a clog right there there's something that is stopping that engine from pumping up and moving at full um acceleration you cannot well, operate in your opinion, what could that be because i can give you two quick examples for some people they're sexually traumatized that's yeah? true and for that can mean someone who's been molested or raped as a child let's go back to childhood and therefore, sex is a mechanical practice. They know they're supposed to like it. They believe they're supposed to desire it, but they just have a disconnect. So there's still sexual trauma there. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's simple stress. They know they're supposed to be having sex at a certain age, but they're just yeah. not f feeling it. But because they're in a relationship, they feel the need that they have to, they have to fulfill it. But there's just no connection there. And for some people, it's pressure. They feel like their partner or their lover is on a whole other peak level for what they want. And they know they cannot really hit that level. So therefore, they're under pressure. And for other people, they actually have spiritual husbands or wives. So I'll give you multiple examples, yeah? And when I say spiritual husbands or wives, people, I don't mean you have a real person in your life that's your husband or wife. I mean, somebody in a spirit realm that you can't even see that's claiming you as their wife or husband. And that's why you're having constant issues finding someone, keeping someone, maintaining someone, and having a fulfilling relationship. Because there's someone in a spirit realm claiming you and tr making it darn impossible for someone new to come in. I'm giving you a few examples. Yeah, that could be a possibility where, you know, spiritually, that could be a problem. Food that's is one That's a deep one. That's a deep one. Food is one, and um, based on the, the blueprint of our individual too, the star system, they could have um, karmic problems pertaining to that. Where tell us about that, because I don't, I don't subscribe to star signs, but I acknowledge it. So tell us about that. As everyone lives by it these days, it seems. Tell me about it. <laughs> all, right, so, all right. Basically, right, all of us are a star system. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, we know we have our head right down to our toes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the star system deals with the whole body. Mm -hmm. From Aries that deals with the head from, to Pisces that deals with the feet. Mm -hmm. no. And Taurus, which is me, which is led by the throat. The throat, all right? Mm -hmm. So going down to the root of things, which mm -hmm. is the nine and the eight, mm -hmm. the a few cuts that they miss out, they don't, they don't really speak about the ninth um, energy of a few cuts that deals with the spine. And, mm. and, and the eight, which is uh, Scorpio, which deals with the genital. Now, when we see certain aspects like planets in the eighth house or uh, whatever um, sign is there, it can tell certain scenarios that the person is going to experience based okay. on their sexual energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, these medical practitioners know that. That's how they mm -hmm. can figure out, all right, this person born at this time, blah, blah, blah. Let me see um, where the energy sequences are to tell what we can do to help them. Because okay. this was the first, the first principle practice back in Kemet. Yeah, Learning yeah. the star system to know thyself. And numerology? Numerology too, mm -hmm. where you, you see yeah. the numbers, all mm -hmm. the numbers of the words combined together can tell about self. Mm -hmm. There's power Without in it. names and neology. I definitely, definitely believe in that. That's for sure. Yeah, we can't go wrong. We, we, we use the numbers. The numbers mm -hmm. are basically um, mm -hmm. tell, telling us a story about our, our existence also. Mm -hmm. so, so pertaining to sex, there's, there's a number of situations that can happen to block the, the um the sacral chakra mm -hmm. and it's called sacral for a reason because it has to do with life being transferred and transformed from one person to the other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so our sexual energy is so important where if 
we don't try to become a better version of ourselves. Some people are going to still have problems. It's because they don't know, you know, what they, they need to do. And they go to different places with, with they have false information for them. Right? So let's so go back a bit. So I've tried to give a few examples, but I'd like to hear a couple from you if I maybe I've missed it. What, uh -huh. for you, um, is the catalyst for people having these sexual blocks? Because you gave example analogy of the car being blocked, yeah? So what, for yeah. you, blocks this sexual chakra in the first place? For me? Okay. For what you know, maybe for you. Let me get closer, maybe for you. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> you mean like sure. what blocks it? That's what you're saying, right? What blocks it? Yeah, in your, in your experience or understanding or belief system, what is it that blocks it? And how can we then... What are the remedies from your experience or even observation or study um, can people do to then unblock it and reconnect their, you know, that, that the energetic, that sexual chakra? First, the heart is very important. Everything that deals with the heart is, it goes back to the mind and the lower parts of self. Mm -hmm. So persons who are doing wrong, you know, guilty stuff, and they know what they did, the heart, the heart space is going to recognize that and it's going to send the message right to the sexual chakra. Mm -hmm. So that can block um, the person spiritually for, from, you know, having, you know, long-term good sex, right? Based mm -hmm. on the heart, what you're feeling inside, what you feel about a person. So that's one. The next thing is what can block um, the sexual chakra is overweight, right? Oh, wow. Blo bloated stomach heavy down the, 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 the lower parts of self, right? <laughs> the the man or woman? Yeah, the, you know, big people with Is that big men God, or women? Men and women, right? And the good sex so doesn't mean... Because if a man's very big, it can't seem teely anyway. <laughs> it can't seem teely. <laughs> it's a situation, man. His problem that he has to go fix. But a woman, she can't put on her socks, but she'd have to see that, and a man have to see everything, but I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, and it causes a problem when you urine, when you want to pee, it might be difficult for some people mm -hmm. too, based on the <laughs> fact that, as I said, if you train, if people train down everything within them, gut, it's going to heavy down the, the lower chakras, right? Mm -hmm. It cannot be um, active as how it's supposed to. No, to unblock that is being active, working on self, getting active again, feeling that burn with the throat, the body, to burn out all the toxin. Because Babylon number one target is our spirituality. Yeah, yeah. And to damage us from reaching to the levels that we're supposed to reach. Mm -hmm. So those seven main chakras, they'll do anything to, to keep them blocked. Right? Being yeah. un, un... Being, um cruel to self, being, you know, cruel to others, being disrespectful in certain ways, abusing um, people, you know, with words or physical abuse, all of that blocks these chakras. Mm. Speaking wrong about another person, calling another person names and making another person feel worse about themselves by using mm. the expression of words block the sexual chakra. Really? Right? Because... Yes, everything begins with the roots. But well, there's some mean people that have some great sex, dude. I don't know how. Well, with that <laughs> said... I don't know how, if, that, if, well, if that's your rendition of the reasons the why. The difference between that, no. Remember, all right. Mm -hmm. Anim animalistically, yeah. They can go on and bam, bam, boom, boom, and say, oh, that's great sex. Yeah. But the, the sex that I'm talking about is holistic, a holistic vibration that can heal the entire yeah, but then you're talking about couples because right about now there's a lot of casual sexuality happening yes you're yeah, talking but, about you can't really i mean can you really give that holistic energy to someone that you're just having a one night stand to or maybe you can that moment but could you consistently give that holistic side of yourself if you're having casual sex all the time no i mean that those are for people who want to practice casual sex because mm -hmm. as i said before right the blockages are going to remain the same where people stuck on a three-dimension level. Yeah. Right? And they to move from there because they feel like what they're doing is, is pleasure. Right? Remember, pleasure, it feels good. Right? But is it do, doing you any good benefit? 
in a long okay, term. Okay, so let, let me let me expand that. Let me go deeper. Uh -huh. Or expand uh -huh. it. If sex for many culturally up until this day is purely for procreation. Pro procreation, whichever you want to however you want to pronounce it, to have children. Mm -hmm. Still in parts of Africa, in a never never lands, deep, deep far away. There are married couples that live in their huts to this day. The man will say, Come. Literally. And she will get off her single bed, two single beds in the in the mud hut. I've seen this documentary. Yeah. And he basically mainly only sleeps with her for having children or some of them. If they're purely his pleasure, that's why the women are circumcised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To this day, they're trying to ban all this female circumcision because the women, it's not supposed to be her pleasure. It's meant to be his, culturally. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just giving you an example. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I love the idea of Buddhist teachings and um, also tantric sex. Because a lot of the Buddhists, when you hear them speak about it is the art of desire that causes us beings to self-inflict mental health sometimes. Not all mental health, but mental health, depression, anxiety. Okay? The desire mm -hmm. of more than what you have or where you're at. Desiring more can give someone depression or even anxiety or go and teeth kill and whatever because you're not accepting with what you've got. So the art of desire. Okay? So mm -hmm. when I look at it like that, and then you got tantric, which is, as you know, me and you could be having, if we were to hold a meditation deep and intense enough, a stare as we sit in front of each other, literally, and people mm -hmm. can reach to an orgasmic state without no physical touch whatsoever, hour and hour and hours the level of intimacy and mindism that would take to, to produce an orgasm without no touch. There are people that are at that level of holistic lovemaking. Yeah, yeah. I've never met That's one person in my life yet ready for that. I'd be ready. <laughs> I'd yeah, be ready. I mean, you have people who are tucked in, but not everybody is true to self. Imagine that. Well, you're just, you know, literally, or even you have like a feather massage, but it's literally no touch. It's just feather. It's purely feather. And maybe you're just, you're just, your, your orgasmic state is purely on, on, you know, like, it's like doing this heat, right? That, you know, the, the sensation and you're going up and down the person's body the whole time. And the man, I see the man all convulsing like he's about to head spinning like exorcist. Well, to Turn me, the, the, great, him yet. It's the, the, deep, the greatest, know? the greatest um, part of that, that can happen. That but is what physically. I call amazing levels of intimacy and readiness and connection. I, know. I, I think um, on a physical level, my heart and, and, and body has to play a, a great role, but it takes control and it takes realism and it takes, you know, people who are connected to such level to reach those supreme heights of being physically inserting oneself into another to feel all them vibrations going up of course it can be done but people got to be real to self and you know being in realism coming into union and having an agreement you know is is beneficial without that agreement yeah. then you know it won't work like that because as i said people love have them look up casual sex the little bum, yeah, bum, people, bum, like this day and age it's like but I mean, there are people that are at those stages and some people are unaware of it, you know, and that's all right. But, hey, is there anything uh -huh. else you want to touch on? Because I think that we can go a lot deeper and a lot more expans expansive, but I feel like it would be great if somebody else jumped in or shared experiences. That way it's just not, you know, mine in your opinion, because this, this is so diverse. This is a part three, four and five. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, if somebody want to come in, I don't see nobody. No, uh, don't people, mean, are, people are like this chilling, and that's t no pressure to those who's viewing or have viewed or who watch the playback. But there's there's so many levels to it, and that's the reason why we cannot say that there's one version because mm -hmm. everyone has their rhythm and everyone has their lineage, and I guess there's an interpretation for us all. 
But but what I want to ask you though, Sido, when I say um, me. one version, this one version, what you really mean? What you think I mean? I, I really mean by having this one connection? Oh, you mean in terms of uh, soulmate, or is it soul oh. type? What are you referring to? Uh because I, I heard you said like you know, um, it's not just this one thing like this, like. I'm not trying to say this is my own perspective. It's it's out there for everyone to occupy. It's like you you um. But it but it is a perspective though because if I mean if okay for example if I switch off here, and I go and research, where's the research coming from? The book, the YouTube, the this, the that. But what if it's coming from purely within because you've lived it and you've seen it and you've travelled. Uh huh. Do you understand? So knowledge yeah. is for everybody, but then again, uh -huh. there's been books that's that's been invented to confuse us. That's why you have people that's called debunkers, people that yeah. are paid by the government to uh -huh. debunk and shut down truth. And make, for example, someone may let's say like, is it David Icke? Is that his name, David Icke? Man like yeah. David Icke, who has been uh -huh. talking about certain things for decades from when I was young. Mm -hmm. And people were paid to be like, oh, no, he's going mad. So there'll be other reporters saying, we've researched that he's gone, you know, got an issue. People's been paid from the government to say that he's off key. He's not all there. He's, he's, um, YouTube's been shut down. He's been talking about COVID coming way before COVID came. True. One of those people. He's one of those guys. Yeah. So they shut his page down. They shut him down because he was saying too much. Mm -hmm. Now, what, for those of us who weren't even a part of the light system at that time, the knowledge system, the woke crew, people are like, oh, he's he's way off. But it's uh -huh. like everyone's now on a you know on his page. He's been there from time ago. So where on earth did he get his enlightenment from? Way back. Now it's trendy to be woke. You see where I'm going with this? It's trendy to be a nutritionist. It's trendy to be a vegan. It's a positive trend, but it's a trend that's having people enlightened. He was on it before it became a trend when you were seen as weird. Yeah. That's when you know that you're on a different level, you know. Yeah. I was scared sometimes to say certain things. I was back then because no, I was scared. Remember I said, no, you're nowhere said. near that. You're nowhere near that. You're nowhere. No, no, you're not. Trust me. No. No, like back in the days, like when I know certain things, like when I woke up to myself and realized certain things, I would say things to my friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, the. the the um, feedback that I would get, you know, was like, uh, yo, you want to say like, maybe I'm, I'm crazy or, 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 you know, just say some stupid things for me to think like I'm not saying something of worth. So looking at all the truth speakers and people who are, you know, here to present that truth to people, they are seen as being, you know, like crazy. But long afterwards, this, they find out that these people were actually telling the truth, just like a Bob Marley. When Bob Marley came oh, on, God, yeah. people a bunch of stuff. They were saying that the man was crazy, right? And then but long Bob Marley was not political. It's not like he came out with weird information that had you. He was political. He was he was he was wise with you know his a uh, you know political consciousness. He wasn't like someone talking about phenomena and but he's very deep he's a very deep spirit and he only spoke things that he i felt like he felt like he needed to say he wasn't yeah. trying to be popular there's a difference yeah that's true but what i'm trying to say is that you know people who speak their mind mm -hmm. who say what needs to be said you know mm -hmm. are seen as being local and 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 being painted they paint these people in a very bad image in a bad way for people not to look their way mm -hmm. right so it can go from a peter touch to bob marley all the way up to mm -hmm. all the all the way up um to to all them other people will come and speak on certain truths even mm -hmm. back to the jesus days with those yeah. people saying certain truth they were crucified murdered tortured for saying the the truth for speaking upon certain things that people need to know certain prophets right so these supernatural things been happening all these years and so let me tell something at you before we close this live it's been a very long one <laughs> yeah right. 
Uh, but it, this is more like a reasoning, guys. With this, this is like a chit chat with Silver, so that's why I'm more vocal. Yeah. Um, I mean, let me throw sorry. something at you. Let me throw something at you. Um, when we say uh, people that may say things that may may see them, people will see them as like as you would you say local. Again, do you not think there's a difference between someone reading something and reciting what they've read and someone who's talking about real experiences? Yeah, there's a difference. People want to hear, like, where you got this information well, from. Of course, yeah. Where, where this came from when nobody don't really look at the people who have the, the truth within them that was born with the, the knowledge of self. They, that's they don't what look I'm coming to. That's the they, fact, is the knowledge of self. But it's yeah, your so, fact for self. Yeah, and these are the facts that help others to realize their factuality too. But no, when we speak on our truth and we speak from self, we've been ridiculed. And we've been put down because, oh, uh, it's just speaking and, and, you know, oh, he sees it. And where you get that knowledge from? Where you get it from? I want to know. You got to look in yourself. You got to go within. It's within your DNA and RNA it's in your genetics. But if that right? was the case, no, but here's the thing. I agree with you. But if that was the case with a lot of people, they wouldn't need to read or research. It would be within them. Do you understand? So I'm saying to you, I'm not saying we shouldn't read, but I'm saying if yeah. it was all within self, which a lot of mine has come from, you uh -huh. wouldn't have to go researching. No, but all right, this is it's ways to it. You have to know self for self to be self to mm. know what you're going to put yourself into. Because, <laughs> yeah, okay, I hear you, that. We, we live in, in a world where there are so many traps, right? I'm yeah. telling like people, don't take my word for it, you gotta yeah. find out for yourself, right? These books, we gotta decode them because they are not all the way accurate. One self with reading have to go with it and say, all right, I'm going to read this. Go back, hold the meditation. It will come to you what you need to know. It will come to you and say, oh, that doesn't make no sense at all. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. It connects you to something. You read that book, it's mm -hmm. supposed to lead you to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. I'll give you some insight that can help you along the journey. So what I'm saying, when you have knowledge of self, and you're reading these books, you're listening to other people, some way, somehow, what you need to know will present itself. You will know, it will come. It but will, let it me will... throw a couple of questions to you before I go, right? Before we go. Yeah. This is like one to throw random, random questions to you, because you're very, I think you're a man who is very knowledgeable of self, and a man who's also equally knowledgeable of the external self, of things that you pick up on and observe and read and, and, and wisdom and stuff like that. So let me put a few things to you why would you say that multiple people throughout my time has come to me and asked me whether i am a reader which i'm not that's the first question i'm going to ask you so i'm going to throw things to you that i may know the answers to but i'm going to throw it to you so let's just say why would you think that multiple people think that i am either a reader or a healer and i mean multiple people approach me with this your energy doesn't lie your eyes the way you speak the energy that you carry your energy alone says everything about you okay break right? it down give us tangible give us tangible <laughs> your, energy, your energy alone says everything about you right mm. people when when they come around people that have such high vibration or have a connectivity towards certain things are open chakra you know your heart is open to um heal to help you know you're just one of that person that is there you know when a person come and arrive at your doorstep is to help them because you you were embodied with that from birth but a lot of this, people are I, I know a lot of people who have wonderful open. Well, we're not talking about a lot of people here Silva. Okay. we're talking All right. about you you know, okay, <laughs> other, other people. No, other people. I, I want, I, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play. Guess who now? Yeah, I'm gonna play like the yeah. guess who. You're a man that know a lot. 
Let's see how much you know. Yes, yeah, so yeah. basically, <laughs> silver, as, as a woman, all right, as a nurturer, mm -hmm. right, as a woman that speaks her mind, people will listen because you're born with that intuition already. Mm -hmm. You can you can look into the situation and arrive at the answer, mm -hmm. right? Based on the fact that you have that mind and you hear, you have the ear to listen, you listen keenly. It enters your mind, you see what's supposed to be done. So now, when they say certain things to people and it sounds accurate in their ears, they're mm -hmm. going to be like, wow, they're going to be fascinated with you. I want to see, like, who... They want to know more about you because you but, connect but, but with I them. hear that as a side note, but is that um, an example? I'm going to give you... I'm just going to throw some examples at you as we wind down the live, yeah? As we kind of soften it all up, but... <laughs> Let's play, let's play mystery. Let's have you pick at silver. Let's just spin it around on its head for a minute, yeah? I'm having fun, all right? Number one, I'm going to give you elements of evidence. Number one, my mother told me that when I was little, I'm talking about young in a buggy, in a stroller, that young. Uh, uh -huh. Someone said to her, like, you know, that don't look like any of this ordinary girl child in the buggy. Uh-huh. My mom was like, well, why would you say that? They're like, mm-hmm. And she never said anything to me until I started sharing experiences with her from young. And she still didn't say anything to me until I said to her, for the last few years, I've had multiple people that has approached me asking me whether I am a reader or a healer. And then being on social media, I also have people that enter my inbox that I don't know who may have just added me, come straight to my inbox and said, excuse me, are you a healer, right? Or are you a reader? And I've had to ask people, why are you asking that of me? Because I want to hear their rendition or why they think that. And I would say, no, that's not my line of work. But thank you for coming to... And I, I always say, it's not my line of work. Yeah? Silver. Honestly. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to know, I'm not, see, I'm not asking you for, for, I'm asking you based on what you say you know and you understand, like, why you think people, multiple people will have that of me. Or I'll because walk in a room and then maybe all of a sudden someone will be like, excuse me, you know you have a very powerful spirit and I get it a lot. Different places I go, I have yeah. these, these things of people consistently. Yeah, people see you. <laughs> As I said, soul, so no, so recognized, soul, real, no real, right? When and people and men are, are are almost fearful to have intimate relations with me sometimes. Yeah, all right. You're walking with so much power. What you expect, huh? As a powerful being, a powerful I woman, don't, that I don't mean it on an ego trip level. Do you know what I mean? No, that's a, all right. Ego has to be balanced, same way. Yeah, the I ego understand that. The spirit, right? You, mm -hmm. when, when people say, oh, it's too ego, be yourself. If your ego is strong, why not put your mm -hmm. ego? Be I mean, there's a time and a place for the ego, we know that. Yeah? Huh? There's a time and a place for the ego, but I'm trying to get tangible. Maybe you don't know the answer then, yeah? No, but I'm thinking, because you know so I, much, gonna, I, just gonna, I wonder, I'm, you know, I'm not, what I'm you not going to tell us this because this is a live, all right? You already know what you, no, you no, know. No, I, no, but the thing is, you see what I'm saying? What, see, what I'm doing for viewers is I'm uh -huh. spinning the table on myself. So it's easy, remember, this is not an interview, this is more like us reasoning, because that's why I'm speaking so much, because normally I don't talk a lot on my interviews, yeah? So this is a reasoning. So I'm like, well, it's alive. Give me your rendition. Doesn't mean it's fact, but I'm open to hear your version. So if you know what you think is the answer, let us uh -huh. all hear it. But if you don't know, that's equally okay. All right, so you as a, a woman... Let, that, let's see you what, know, what, what uh, you uh, think. A lot of people um have been coming to right. It's for a reason, right? You mm -hmm. you are rooted and grounded and connected to yourself, mm -hmm. and it, we work with that power because you are a powerful woman, right? No mm -hmm. doubt, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying this to make you feel like oh, you say this. Oh. No, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> silver people gonna be connected to that i don't need to go any mm -hmm. deeper than that the powers mm -hmm. that you have is shining upon the surface of this world and other people are seeing it 
So when the I think, that's more, I think that's more of a connection you're talking about. But I think maybe the uh, question is not for me, for me to ask you. I'm talking about in 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 a, in a, in, a, in that realm, which has nothing to do with the power and people being attracted to the power and being intrigued. You know, what I mean, that's a whole <laughs> different thing. That's I think that's a whole separate thing. So but I, I, I accept your I accept, I accept that's your response, but it doesn't. It's not the question I'm asking. It's, it's speaking about like you know maybe spiritual or or what kind of get me like you think some more what, what are you really looking for <laughs> if you want some more clarity cars i'm all gonna right. be well, telling I'm you the same is, thing all right um how, okay how can i be more specific i don't know if i could be any more specific than saying um if someone was walking down the street and someone kept saying, are you an architect? Are you an architect? Are you an architect? And this person is not going around with a, pe with a pencil and, and paper drawing buildings. Maybe the person will start wondering, how do they know I'm an architect when I haven't gone around drawing buildings in public? Yeah, or what makes them think I'm an architect if I haven't spoke about drawing any buildings and wanting to do any architectural um, structure? So then that person may think, hmm, like I'm asking you, why do you think people think I'm an architect? Yeah. Why do so many people feel like, remember, we're talking about supernatural, not afraid to spice it up. I thought I'd throw myself in the pan. Uh huh. But I told you, all yeah. right, I'll break it down. You, you already know who you be. And I'm just going to keep saying that because you're not going to get the e exact answer from me. Because mm -hmm. it's something that you already know. Right? So we can't tell you something that you already know. I'm not going to say it like that. Because you already know. <laughs> I'm not saying yes or no. I thought Mr. Wise might have a rendition for the public to hear. Because, you know, uh, can I give you some funny examples, though? Can I give you some funny examples, yeah? This is All funny. Right, this is, this is, this is no, funny I'm, example. I'm not going to give you no funny um, examples. No, but I'll give I would you a funny example, you, right? You're not going to tell me nothing today. You know, your wisdom ain't on, on point with me today, but I hear it, yeah? <laughs> okay. Man, man, so, man, not like that, Silva. The thing is, all right? What is it? Go on. The thing is, all right, with a woman like you that can express herself like that, and you bring yourself with such confidence, all right? Mm -hmm. Not every... Not, a woman out there got that, but your energy might just be different to other people that they recognize it. You know, good heart, good deeds, mm -hmm. you know, compassion for other people. That says a whole lot about a, 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 a person. Having all of that is key to, be, be, to, to present yourself, to help people and heal them. Your words alone, when you talk to people, your words alone says something. The vibration of your words when you speak does something to people. How much more deeper may I go go? Tell well, this. Uh, well, just, just, just to summarize what you just said, because I'm very honest with myself as a person. Uh -huh. When someone has that ability on a generic level, because I think a lot of us have what you just described to me, and thank you for that, yeah. So when someone uh -huh. has that generic, you know, compassion and whatever, whatever, it's a balance. So I'm equally savage with my words. Uh -huh. yeah? I'm equally not compassionate with people. I've learned to have that balance, but because of my first hand, which is usually compassionate and giving, I'm giving all of that to myself right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people focus so much on being the greatest employer, employee that they could be, as opposed to being the best support worker to themselves. So right now, I'm trying to be compassionate with self. Yeah. So I'm equally, right. I'm equally, you know, loving as equally I can be, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I just totally, yeah, totally. So I'm not all love and light. I have that balance where yeah. Yeah, but I might get all gangster with your ass. As a, as a powerful <laughs> person, all right, anybody will I'm reach a state real, of you know? balance. Everybody, anybody that reach the state of balance, they know that dark side. They know mm. that 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 warrior side. All right. Anybody that came up and said they want to do good and they rather do that, you don't play around with those people. They, they know that side. That's mm. balance. You rise up from out of that. Yeah. Right? Now, you're, now you're shining a light. That's what I'm talking about. That's your, the powers. When you hear me say powers, it's because your balance are reached to a state of self where you understand who you are 
on both sides or on all sides per se right i don't think you have it you know well basically whatever you say right now um, about i'm pleased to say that to you i actually haven't a lot of um, what i mean by that is i know thyself up until this moment that's all we do know but what wisdom has taught me and this is such a beautiful thing where we want to be seen as someone that knows ourselves, and i know myself and it's a part of a status definitely i can say i know thyself in terms of the realm the realm that i sit in but the yeah. realms of lineage lineage past tribes i'm so uh -huh. far from knowing thyself even when i go and get my dna which i'm going to do and do my, my ancestral testing I'm still not going to know thyself until I live thyself. So there's, there's selves to know that will make me feel complete because then it will make sense for why we are the way we are. Yeah, but, all right, you put it... That's, um, me, that's that. me going that deep, but that's the truth. Yeah, but pertaining to what I say, when I say know thyself, I talk like, you know, the person who you are now that came out of certain situation, not a lot of person reach that state. So you mm -hmm. know yourself to that extent. Now, mm -hmm. speaking about people, we know, like, have them brain screwed in properly, uh, have them head on them body properly. Yeah, those people don't know half of what you know about yourself and your oh, lineage. Oh, my God, you understand that, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so no. with those people, right, we, we speak in Spanish to them, right? Cause them still stuck on the animalistic level of self, mm. right? And once people depend on the animalistic um, level of self, we cannot get through to them because they don't have the ear to listen to these words. Now, mm -hmm. what them do out here? You, still, you start see some woman have four but um but they chant together. Maybe we just call it like that, Zin, and them look out of shape. You know, you have some man right now. You mean the 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 bum lift or you mean yeah what lift you know that mm -hmm. stuff there zane mm -hmm. them them go way out of the border of of um <laughs> trying to see who they are on a spiritual level to mm -hmm. know themselves and love themselves and appreciate That's not spiritual, themselves. Like physical level yeah so right now in the state of mind of many people them lost them don't know themselves mm -hmm. what of people there so when we say you know yourself me appreciate you if you see the level where you're there right now and I express yourself as a as a woman mm. i give back and i nurture men mm. like me because what you're doing right now you're nurturing me you're giving you mm. give me you're giving me words of up, up upliftment when you're speaking because that goes both ways. very articulate that goes both ways yeah i mean mm. yeah for real, but me just mm -hmm. speak from my term where as a woman like you and know yourself to a certain degree yeah me love to see them thing there so me when me say yo you know yourself to a certain degree is a sort mm -hmm. of me showing your respect mm. no i get you that I mean? so many degrees that i you know we realize that wow you really don't you do but you really don't you know until you know i think it'd be mind-blowing if we did realize the deeper lineage and i don't know if it just mean what tribe you're from i mean the spirit of the tribe is very deep to why we really are the way we are why we function the way we do why we long lust like this like the things that we do where these things come from you know where did it come from how much of it has been implemented and how much has been from the umbilical cord you know implementation it's, sure. it's so deep for real you i know? like the fact that i said that it's true it's it's, no it's, it's deep it's so deep but i'll throw a couple of things in the spanner before i go i was going to say to you to um okay the first one would be um well i'll give you this one i used to have a friend i have an acquaintance mm -hmm. and he randomly said to me he was dating somebody new and i don't know why he did this i'm going back on the question i was asking you about well you know with all your you know you're all your third seeing eye what do you see in me yeah that's i was playing with you a little bit as well right yeah so i don't know why my friend did this i don't know why he did this but he sent me the picture he said i'm going to send you the picture i said don't send me the picture of this woman because i want to be seeing different different women yeah this show me the one that you really want to be with then i can meet her anyway so he sends me the picture he says silver silver tell me what you see i says 
why? Remember, I'm telling you about people and me. I said, why would you send me a picture of a woman and tell me, ask me to tell me what? I don't read pictures, but I used to. I used to like writing to pictures. Uh -huh. I'm a creative writer in dormant stage. I don't really write as much anymore at the moment, but I used to like to look at, I can look at, say, your picture, and it would make me want to write. I used to have this thing. I don't know why, but I used to love writing to pictures, photographs, as well as music. But anyway, he doesn't know that. So he sent me the woman's picture, and this was only, this was during lockdown. This is within the last two years. This has never happened to me before, and neither has anyone sent me their picture and said, what do you see? Do you know, I looked at the woman, and I don't know why this happened to me, but my eyes started weeping. Weeping? Weeping. My eyes were like tearing, tearing. I thought this has never happened to me. It was so weird. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm like... I said, this woman has gone through so much pain. I don't know how I knew that. I don't know nothing about her. And I don't know why he took it upon himself to send me that picture on that day, because it's never happened before. And it came with a feeling, though. It came with a feeling that this hit me. And I was like, this woman, this woman, I said, I don't know her. I know nothing about her. But what I'm going to say to you is this. If you're not serious about her, please leave her be. Leave her. I feel like she's been through enough pain. If I'm you're not serious, you. yeah, if you're not serious, please leave her be. Amen. And he said to me, there's a reason why I sent you the picture. He said, and all you've done is confirm what she's told me. Yeah. And I found that to be a very weird experience. Because it's never happened before, and it's never happened after. What do you make of that? Give me one sec right here. Mm -hmm. um, that's very interesting, though. Very, very interesting. All right, so... Are you saying that you're an empath? You have that, that gift? Do you know what? Do you know, first of all, I'm so, I don't really see empath as being a gift, because, again... Right now, it's another trend. Anything that seems to be trending on things that are not clothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still rocking with me? You're still on my live. I can't believe it. Who's here with me? I don't even know. Oh, wow. It's been a very long life. It's the longest life. I wonder who's here with me. Guys, let me know in the comments box. Send me a heart or something. Who's here? At this point, I've just zoned out. We're just chopping it up and reasoning. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I feel like we're on the phone with each other. This is what this live's about, like a, just reasoning, yeah? So that's the first example I'm going to give you. The uh -huh. second last example I'm going to give you is there's someone on my social media that I've never met before. Um, we sometimes occasionally, every so often, swap inboxes. Maybe they're sending me their latest artwork or um, something or the other. But we've never met before, literally. Probably, we've never even had a phone call before. Yeah? And I had this really weird dream about this person. And I dream all sorts of rubbish, to be honest. But sometimes I know it's deeper than just me eating too much cheese and going to bed. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah? So mm -hmm. I had this really weird dream that his mother called me i don't know the man this is what was weird about it his mother called me and no i had a dream that i was in his presence i got close my eyes i was in his presence and his mom he was playing music to me he was playing some kind of music to me i was in his presence and then his mum somehow came on the telephone and said something to me. It was something along those lines. I'm missing some pieces. I can't remember. It happened last year, I think. And the mess. The mum gave me a message. All right, in the dream. Now I hesitated. I said, "Shall I tell this man? Because the man's going to think I'm off key. The man don't even know me like that. So it's not everything you dream you repeat. Because I dream a lot of stuff that I don't tell people." Right, yeah. and half the times when I dream things, it's warnings, and it always happens. It always happens with me. Okay, 
So I decided after having a bit of a pray, pray about it that I was going to tell him. He was like, what? Wait. And I said to him, I don't want to tell you who the person was in the dream. I didn't want to tell him it was his mum. Because in the dream, his mum had passed on. She had transitioned. How can I go to a man that I don't know, don't know his life, and tell him about his mum, who's, his mum might be living for all I know. It's going to be distressing. Anyway, so I told him. He was freaking out. He was freaking out. Because he's like, Silva, I don't actually know you. And I don't regret you telling me. But my mum's actually died. I don't know how you would know that. And number two, I said to him, I feel like you might want to put your mum's voice as an intro or on your on your next track. Because she's yeah. given me a message for you. And I don't and I said, I'm so sorry that if I sound weird, then cool. And he said to me, It's this is really sp spooky because my mom has passed away. I didn't tell him. I said, the person who passed away, told, he said, my mom's passed away. I've got my mom's voice on an old recording, which I've already put on my track. He goes, I'm going to yeah. get it for you. I'm going to get it for you now. Listen to this. He said, but Silver, haven't you heard it already? I'm like, no. Because I'm going to get it for you now. It's on SoundCloud. It's been out. Here's the mystery. He goes to get the track that's already been released. It's almost like my message is late. From spirit world which i just thought was a silly dream he goes to get the track that's already been released in the public some time ago to only find out that her voice is missing on this track that he already put on that everyone's already heard so i was like clearly your mom's telling me that that's the reason why she's told me to tell you this because you've gone and gone to, you've gone and found the track and her voice is gone it's vanished of this track that's been published can you understand what i'm saying to you it's a madness so he's like, hang on a minute. Why is my mom's voice gone of the track that I've released time ago? I said, maybe she asked me to tell you. And that's why now you realize through me, her voice is gone. And then he sent me that. I said, don't send me your mom's voice. I'm going to be scared. He said, don't be scared. And he sent me a recording of his mom's voice. The same thing you heard? I don't know, but I don't think I wanted to know. I was, I was spooked out. I was scared. I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear the same voice. Um, so he, this, this let, happened let recently. You, this happened recently. Let me ask you this, right? Um, when he was a child, right? Mm -hmm. Go did on. He, did you <laughs> <get in>. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying Go is on. that mm -hmm. have you ever? experience having like a medium sort of um energy like could you from the time i was young to the time i'm sitting here now yes okay all right so so most things that happen a lot of things that happen a lot of the conversations that i have i'm already preempting the answer because i already kind of know what's going to be has said and done a lot of the time not always so I'm not mm -hmm. able to go and say, let me pay the lottery numbers, which I wish I could. Yeah, yeah so uh, what it is, is it, it is an empath thing, but I have decided that I don't want to be an empath. But you have that gift. But here's the right. thing. Here's the thing. This, you know, again, everyone's like, you know, I'm a witch, I'm an empath, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a, I'm a I hate all that. I, I do yeah. hate all of that. I so what it is, I don't want to say I'm an empath. Uh huh. I would like to say I don't really have a I don't really have a right word for it to be honest. Because there's so many terms for these things. Some people call themselves light sure. workers. Some people call themselves. There's so many terms, and I feel like the term will come to me. But I don't have. I'm not. I don't read palms. I don't do all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something. A lot of things that I've experienced. I can look at someone, I'm, I'm asking them a question, and I already know the answer, I know it's bullshit, they're telling me. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, I actually know you're talking shit to me. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because I know, I already know the answer to it. And, that's me, and whether I'm tapped in or out of myself, I'm still able to do that. But in terms of the deep, the deepness, 
I have to be more in a disciplined state. So when I gave up smoking, I became more clairvoyant energy than when I was smoking. Yeah. See, people it's talk about me giving them a, a no. I don't need any of that. That's a that's a different frequency you get when you're smoking weed. Since when I stopped smoking, I've got a lot of dreams. I have a lot of messages via dreams. A lot. Yeah, I, I agree with you too. I, I recently, you know, been going back and forth, and what I've been realizing is. When, when I don't smoke for a long period of time, my energy is always stronger. That's what I realized. So, you know, you telling me this now is a confirmation to me, likewise, because I seem like we have similar tribal forces. Yeah, we basically. do, we do. But you're more knowledgeable. You're more book knowledgeable. And I'm just more, I guess, feeling. Just that this is how we've been. So we can all, we can, we, we balance each other out. So a lot of my yeah, I, a lot of my experiences is by a fact. It's got nothing to do with well, books. No, all right. I want to say books. I do decode books. You know to know it's what good, these it's good as well. people are mm. doing. But what how I get my information, you wouldn't even. I mean, you might you know accept it, but sometimes it's just things that comes to my head. And when it does, I go and find if it's true. Where can I see if other people know these things before I say it? But you have to, you have to, you have to test the waters. Like so, for an example, even me, I don't normally speak on, on myself with these things. Yeah, so yeah. we just had a conversation. So I'm giving you miniature slices. Yeah, and I mean miniature. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Appreciate it. yeah. So you gotta but, sometimes test the waters, like anything else, isn't it? Definitely, because at, at first, right. For some reason, um, I'll be sitting down and then I, I get like an epiphany. Like suddenly, I've been getting them like from like um, back in 2018, way down to 2011 too. A lot of downloads. And when they come, I'm like, yo, damn, let me go find out if Google knows this. And then it brings me to some... <laughs> I like the way you said it. If Google knows this, I love that. That's total faith in yourself. Wow. Yeah. So when I, I like go that. on this I like that. Because I want to be feel confident within myself. No, but before I like I that because I'm saying, go check Google. You're saying, no, my download. Let me see if Google knows this. That's exactly. deep. That is deep. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Did, so you, did, did you find, let me ask you a question. Did you find that I don't know if you, was you, okay, was you a big lover on nature before your age now? For the last, or was it a current thing you have with nature and loving for nature and trees? Is it a new thing with you or? It's a current thing from when I was a child, I would normally go to the beach, but there was right. this one time I go to the river. Yeah, and it just changed my perspective of what the, the, the beach is. I'd rather go to the river. Something about the river makes me feel more connected. And I think it's because I'm a Pisces. <laughs> I, I feel that. You know, I just feel a Maybe. stronger connection. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I feel a stronger, a stronger connection to the river. Maybe, yeah. You know, well, interestingly enough, I tell you this. I was always, I mean, I am a beach lover and I never really was into the nature thing other than traveling to the ocean when I traveled and, you know, flew and whatever, you know, holiday. When my son was younger, I took him, you know, for walks and feed the birds and lakes but it wasn't for me it was mainly for him i wasn't in touch like that with anything other than the beach okay about four years ago i was on the bus and this is, i'm going to say this and maybe you're going to tell me off for this but sometimes depending on what you've got whatever it is you think it is can be a blessing and curse it's if you feel like it's governing too much of your life yeah mm -hmm. and that's why i say i'm not governed by star signs or nothing I'm governed by my inner divinity, which is stronger than all of that. That's true. I'm not governed by no star sign, no this, but I'm not, it's all bullshit for me. I acknowledge it's, it exists, of course, uh -huh. but I'm not governed by it. If you've got to be governed by that, then you don't have the divinity of yourself inside. Yeah. I speak yeah. to those people who live by it. I, I love know? the way you say that because, all right, when you say that shows 100%. me a lot, a lot about you, we are... And I don't mean it in an ignorant way, but that's what I've noticed. People are governed by this and that and that. So if I, if that was no longer existing, what would you be lost? 
No, but all right, we gotta look at the star system. It's something to be mastered. No, you're talking about master. Uh, you know? Well, I'm not actually talking about it, but a lot of people don't. Uh, a lot of people do have not mastered this. They just talk about it because they know one or two things, and now their lives governed by it. Everything's a star sign. But what I'm saying to you is, and then you get people that are governed. You know, I guess everything's God, 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 God. It depends on who you are. Okay. So what I'm saying is, I've realized. Okay, the example of nature. Let me stick on that topic, all right? And then you can educate me on that last point. I was on a bus about four years ago. I have a big green, a big fields, okay, near my home. Less than 10 minutes walk. And at yeah. that time, four years ago, I don't think I ever walked through it. Mm -hmm. I walked along the path, but it never, ever dawned on me or interested me to walk through these fields. For what? It's not the beach, remember? Yeah. And I'm on the bus and I have this sudden pull that says, get off the bus or walk through these doors. And I'm like, what the hell? Not right now. Not now. I'm going home. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm going home. This pull inside of me. And I'm thinking, this is where you start questioning. Is it your cuckoo la la? Or is it really spirit? You know, you want to start sometimes doubting yourself or even you got to double check yourself to see whether it really is you know what yeah. you think it is right you know what i mean because no one else is really moving like that sometimes you're feeling like am i all right you know mm. and i'm like i'm not going i'm staying on this bus i'm going home it was niggling at me i got off the bus and i'm walking towards this green if anyone's local if anyone's on this it's called scrubs yeah it's by scrubs prison in west london mm -hmm. yeah so i get off the bus and i'm so captivated and quite scared yeah I don't know what I'm going to find because it's so, it's so bizarre, this pull all of a sudden to walk through this place that I've been living beside for years. I never had that calling. All right, so I get off the bus, bring up my camera and I'm saying, I don't know what I'm supposed to be finding here. And I'm filming this, yeah, Andre? Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, I don't know what I'm going to find here, but I'm walking through and there's nothing. I mean, you can walk through it. It's, it's it's quite large so I, you know i don't think any one sh any woman especially should be walking by themselves through these places but it's not highly dangerous but anyway unless you go deep into the woodland side of it so i'm walking and there's nothing i see nothing yeah instantly i start to weep and cry and i'm like remember i'm looking for something and i didn't see it but i was supposed to feel it I felt it. Yeah, it's this is this is weird. So I'm walking and I'm like, "Why are you crying, you idiot? Like, what what what's wrong with you? Like, what are you crying for?" Yeah, I remember I'm asking myself, like, I'm looking for what I'm supposed to be, and I'm weeping and I'm asking myself. I'm actually sobbing, real big tears, like big big tears, and I'm like, "Why are you crying? Like, nothing's happened. Like, wh but what was happening to me?" Everything that I felt like I dealt with, a lot of things that I felt that I dealt with was coming back up. That was clearly dormant. And I don't know why the universe chose that day and to bring me into nature. And I, I was confused of why it was happening. I got to the end of the path and I felt light. And I had no explanation at that time. Listen to this. Yeah. Suddenly I'm on Facebook. I see a woman post a post that I've never seen this woman before. Okay, a random mm -hmm. post that said people that live around trees are less prone to this or depression or she was, weak. She was giving examples of the effect of being around these things for certain types of people. And I thought, interesting. All right, I'm not really into all that anyway. Didn't pay any mind to it. Less than about six months later, the same thing happened to me. And I'm like, nope, I'm not getting off this bus again. Got off the bus. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the same thing happened to me all over again. I was like, this is getting silly. Yeah. The third yeah. time, nothing happened to me. The third time I got that call in to walk through the same path, I didn't weep. Suddenly I had an epiphany of understanding by the third time. Yeah. And ever since then, for the last at least solid three years, I love to surround myself with woods, trees, woodlands, 
which had nothing to do with the trend of people now, you know, hugging trees. This is what happened to me for me to get to this stage. So and when spirit. I'm around trees now, like horses, especially if I'm by myself, I feel emotional, but I feel elated. And I'm, and I, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a world of feelings. When I get around trees, I take my shoes off. I was never like that before. But then I realized so, a lot of things happen in nature and forests. A lot. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, right? I'm going to ask you a star sign. What's your star sign? I'm a Taurus. Taurus? All right. Yeah, so let's, let's, Taurus, end, let's end on that note. Go on, give me something about my Taurian self. A Taurian. Well, basically, right? As a Taurus, you're connected to nature because it's an mm -hmm. earth sign. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, <laughs> when absorbing people, emotions, which, you know, based on a tar, tar, um, Taurus energy, you basically absorb by touching, feeling, being around other people, you can absorb their energy. So I feel mm -hmm. like when you go into nature, it's a, it's a way of you being healed. You turn oh off yeah, those burden be reborn yeah. again yeah so you're connected naturally as a as a taurus that you know um in that element of self you know yourself to that degree to know like when you go there you know it's just just unloading it you know cleaning out self purging out your system purging out your spirit you know and re be reborn again but before i go i mm -hmm. chose this very moment to say this right people talk about third eye we say first eye because that's, yeah, we face that's what we eye. Have. exactly mm. your first eye and as a person that have psychic energy because everybody have this psychic awareness it's just how they use it so one day i was just chilling laying down right and i i was just leaning back and all i saw was just me being in a, a different place, yo. I'm like, wow. I'm still conscious. I could even glimpse where I'm at in my, my place where I was sitting down and I was seeing somewhere else in my head. No, I wasn't smoking. No, there's, I there's wasn't. There's a name for that. There's a name for that. I can't remember. It's still after projection, but there's another name. There's another name for it. Well, when you know that, when you figure it out or when it come back to you, let me know mm -hmm. because I want to mm -hmm. know what that is. I was just sitting down, yeah? It happened to me twice, mm. right? But I'm going to tell you of this one. I saw, like, I was, you know, like, flying on something, right? It, to me, it felt like a dragon. No doubt. Bro, what were yeah, you no smoking? Doubt. What were you smoking, bro? What were you smoking? <laughs> yeah, I, I was smoking oxygen, yeah? I was, I was smoking on oxygen. Okay. Yeah, higher you than the plane. You flying on a dragon, did you say? No, I was just, I felt like I was flying on something, right? I Maybe I tapped into a dream state, or yeah. my, my, um, my gra a gamma state, where my mind is, is like, I don't know how to call it, but I'm still aware, I'm still conscious, but I can mm -hmm. vividly see, you know, somewhere else in my head. No joke, I wasn't wow. smoking anything. And it happened to me another um, time when I was talking to, um, one of my friends, I think she's also a Taurus too, mm -hmm. right? And I was ta talking to her. Man, she talked my ears off. She was going you into to say it. <laughs> No, I w what she was saying was very interesting. It was very interesting, um, mm -hmm. um, the things that she was saying. So I found myself listening to her, and then I went into a dream. And I, I'm listening to her say where I hear her voice, everything. Yeah, I'm You're still there. You know. I never fell over nor anything. I went into a dream. I, my, I saw myself jump up on a van. And my friend was there. And I hear my friend um, on the phone saying, hello, you still there? And I snap out of the, the, that dream. So I was like... Rob, you fell asleep. You actually fell asleep. That's all it was. No, I didn't fall asleep. If I fell asleep, Silver. I would not hear my friend still speaking to me and saw that half my leg was hanging down from the chair. And still, vividly, my mind was occupied in maybe a different dimension. Now, these are the things that are called um, supernatural. Uh, things that you mentioned, right? Yeah. And things that I'm saying, no, because 
people won't believe me while I'm saying this. They'll say, oh man, you're crazy. All right? <laughs> but, no one believes things until it happens to them. And sometimes they want to hope it doesn't. That's the reality. Exactly. And people who wish yeah. to be an empath. This is another thing before it's we go. It's a responsibility. To to, a these things are responsibilities. Yeah. You think feeling all these people energy and walking down the road and just feel this person like, God, man, I don't want to feel that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's not, it's not, it's not an easy energy to, to even manage to go up front of an individual and talking to them, but you can feel the, 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 the energy from them. You can feel that you now this person is going through something. This person mm -hmm. is sad. That person is angry. It's not a normal feeling. No. So don't do it. To be an empath, good luck. I, I think I'm, I'm going to definitely leave on this note that everything is not for everyone, and we must be very mindful of trying to follow, 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 trying to be a part of everything. And sometimes yeah. we're so unaware, unconscious that is happening, and a lot of things that we that people are running towards. When it hasn't chosen you, you're trying to choose it. It has not chosen you. It comes a great responsibility. True, but not to cut you, yeah. not to cut you off. Those who have that actually running from it because that's, it's that's too much. That's what I'm saying with this. It comes responsibility. And if anything yeah. like me, I'm a scaredy cat. So half the time, I don't want to know. I understand. I understand you. It's just like. <laughs> No, I want to know, but there's times you need to know, but then there's levels. So on that note, this has been a hell of a reasoning, yeah. Yeah, that's how we do. You know, reason we chop it up and season it up and present it to people. Yeah. So <laughs> my last question to you is: After thoughts, Andre, how has it been for you today on Free Brain Thoughts? What are your after thoughts? Well, you know, um, here on this platform. It, you know, you give me the room to express myself, to say things that I've never told some people before, right? Mm -hmm. And it's healing. When one express the, the energy coming from their being, they're getting clarity. Yeah. They're getting, you know, certain things off of, off of the chest, out of the heart, right? Mm -hmm. So it's healing for me. This is healing. That's and great. And as I know, as a healer like yourself, that's what you do to people, right? Mm -hmm. You help them to heal. So I, I, it was a pretty great reasoning. I like the flow, free flowing thoughts. I love that's it. nice. Well, every now and again, I'm going to have you pop back whenever you want to pull up. We're going to have random conversation. Things like dream interpretation will be something that I want to actually speak about. It's like, you know, the, the dream interpretations, what dreams mean. People often have things like, you know, having sex in dreams and, again, spiritual husbands and all these kind of conversations I'd like people to come and, and speak about. So if you are one of those people watching this talk, talk right now or on the playback or even yourself, Andre, if you know anyone that wants to join us or come and do their own exclusive talk on, you know, sexuality, spirituality, generational ties, generational curses, all of it, phenomenons, supernatural, Oh my goodness, yeah. it's, it's, it's endless. Yeah, let's have this conversation. Yeah, and you know, before we go, I have my, my car right here, strategist key, you know, which means finding the keys within self, the key, the breath of life, you know, to access more of self. And, and what, you know, what, big, what, 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 what business are you um, offering? What, 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 what are you doing? I do, you know, my, my readings too. And, you know, I can't see the astrology, yeah? Yep, astrology, numerology, you know, spirituality, it's all in one. Right? So that, anything that also that, the charts and stuff. I don't really work with charts, but if okay. I have to, I will. Right? You know, just to put people on those, you know, levels where they can understand the chart, it's there. You know, we don't have to let these things control us, but it helps us to grow. So okay. I have this card right here. Find me on Facebook, Ajadi Chi, you know, a psychic. And my type of psychic for people is giving clarity. That's all. Not no spooky thing telling you that, oh, 
this happened to you today, so you must do this. No. What I add is clarity to the mind, liberation to the mind, and that's it. Yes. Okay. Okay. On that note, thank you for joining me, and I'm going to see you soon. Right, I'll speak to you in a bit. Feel free to exit the live with the little X's, wherever it is. All right. Thank I got you. you. Come on, we All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, guys, that was a hell of a reasoning. Whew. That was a hell of a reasoning. That was wow. All right, guys. So if you'd like to do any live talks, any topic goes, as long as it flows, hit me up, inbox me, text me, WhatsApp me, whichever way you can reach me. Let's make it happen. And I'll see you all soon.